get a reaction Won't defend it, I won't budge until I get all the facts in I won't argue with the bots about the next current thing Crying over the fake bodies like a bitter death queen Alright everyone, thank you for joining 7-5-2024 X-Day. This is Autohooksology, new amazing track by Symbia, inspired by the book Autohooksology 101. You can find that book on Amazon, and I put a link to the track in the newsletters today, and I also dropped it in the chat, so if you want to go ahead and click that link, subscribe, and comment, and we'll go through some of those comments later. So today is July 5th, which is X Day, if you're not familiar with the Church of the Subgenius. They believe that on July 5th at 7.30 a.m., the Exists, aliens from planet X, a.k.a. Nibiru, would be arriving to annihilate the non-believers and rapture the believers into the saucers. And this prophecy has never come true. They've been announcing this since 1998, but they claim that we don't know what year it is. We don't know when we are. Like, when are we? Maybe this year is 1998. So every year they gather. It hasn't been 1998 yet. It wasn't today. So it's possibly 1997. But the exists have not arrived. Uh, we weren't live last night. I was babysitting a, a dog. Fireworks, etc. Went outside my neighbor, the one with the American flag spandex and bandana. Roman candles shooting red, white, and blue fireballs, said to me, no, your, your dog's not afraid of fireworks. He's just a commie who hates freedom. That didn't actually happen. I'm just mixing fiction with facts like the MSM does. But I was babysitting a dog who was terrified of fireworks, as many dogs are. And we were looking at dog symbolism, by the way, because isn't it interesting that the dog days of summer kick off 7-4, uh, around this time, so July 4th, July 3rd, July 4th, the dog days of summer begin. And what do we celebrate with, you know, besides fireworks? And the dog star goes behind the sun for a period of time. They call this the dog days of summer, 7-3 to 8-8. Eight, eight. According to the occultists, like the cryptocrats that run the world, this intensifies the energy of the sun and Sirius. Whatever the case, the name Sirius, the star, from the Canis Majoris, it means scorcher. And you'll notice many headlines using the phrase scorcher. It's a scorcher. But the burning dog has been a theme. If you think about it, uh, we have RFK, and we talked about this the other day, recently revealed holding a barbecue dog and he was taking a bite out of it. I mean, there's a conspiracy theory that it might have been a goat, but by all accounts, it was a dog. And I'm like, well, this is RFK Jr. biting a dog that's been barbecued. So there's sort of a theme here, the scorcher and the dog. And do I think it wasn't a dog and maybe a goat? I don't know. I mean, he recently, and I'll play the clip, he just came out, RFK Jr. said that he essentially has a mass grave of skeletons. So it, I wouldn't put it past him. But it wasn't just RFK and the dog. So this other story comes out, and this was going viral this morning, where a dog in Colorado, I believe, here we go, Colorado Springs, a dog turns on the kitchen stove, setting the house on fire. Authorities have released a video of a dog starting a house on fire by turning on the stove. So again, serious, scorcher, roasted dog, and now this. I'll play the clip here. In the middle of the night, the dog, name. Uh, let's see if they have the dog's name. I don't think they named it. Maybe it's a minor. But the dog goes up onto the stove and turns it on setting the house on fire. Now I'm just noting, this is viral, this is something, I mean it could be a crisis actor, dog, you know, you could train a dog to do anything. But I'm just suggesting the burning dog has been a theme. And in ancient Egypt the name Sirius signified its nature as scorching. And this is the star that woke up Truman from the Truman Show. It's the star of initiation, it's the God star. It's the star that is the focal point of so many rituals within the Masonic and occult 
a compendium of rites. For example, every Masonic Lodge has the star, the, the pentagram, representing Sirius. It's typically associated with the idea of floods, and of course the New Year's. For example, New Year's, Sirius reaches its highest point and then it falls. As the ball drops, you count down, you're actually summoning the energies of Sirius down. The heliacal rising of Sirius, when it gets past the sun and it starts to rise right above the sun after the end of the dark days of summer, it tends to preclude the floods. And then 9-11. Now, if you remember, on 9-11, 2000, there was a dog named Sirius, a golden, you know, it was a, a, one of these canine dogs named Sirius. And Bill Clinton was photographed with the dog on 9-11, 2000. And he said, Sirius is beautiful. One year later, Sirius the dog burned in the Twin Towers. If you believe the story, which I don't, but I'm just suggesting here the burning dog, blazing star, blazing dog star, some kind of a connection here, which will continue to flesh out. So much interesting news. I mean, there was just like, there was four people bitten by sharks in Texas yesterday. And I got a comment here from one of JL's videos. Cohen researcher aunt said, lo and behold, a shark attack on July 4th, just like the movie Jaws. A woman in South Padre Island, Texas looks staged to me. I heard they were doing CPR on a body in the water, which, yeah, it's probably a floating training dummy. But I looked into it, and it is true that Steven Spielberg's Jaws is the daddy of all Fourth of July movies. That's It revolves around, quote, keeping the beaches open for the Fourth of July and the mayor. If you know, there's, there's this someone trying to prevent the, uh, the uh, shark attacks. I have a list of things to go over, but let's go ahead and see who's in chat here. We're going to talk about the RV explosion, uh, JFK's mass grave, uh, Witsit capitulated, uh, Witsit gets it capitulated to the fact that there's no chemtrails. I got, I, you know, twisted his arm a little bit. He finally admitted it and totally just seeded the conversation. Uh, Boeing. Now, the Boeing Starliner mission, snafu from the get go. Boeing is now an epithet for snafu. They're stranded. And there's some symbolism connected with this. The Calypso capsule is an allusion to the Odyssey. He was stranded with Calypso, the nymph, for seven years before he went on his perilous Odyssey. And I think this may also connect to 2001, A Space Odyssey, which has a lot of connections to 9-11 and the coming space travesty when the ISS falls or when space wars commence, whatever it happens to be. I mean, as it is right now, Elon Musk is getting a, a contract for $843 million, or $666.4 million, pounds, but $843 million to bring the ISS down. So it's going down one way or the other. But the other day, the ISS was under alert because a Russian satellite exploded, hundreds of pieces of space junk caused them to shelter in place. Now, this Russian satellite exploding is right out of Megaopolis, Francis Ford Coppola a movie that had 9-11 predictive programming, so it was temporarily shelved. But this is highly significant. Megaopolis. Uh, Megaopolis is so, sort of a, another way of saying Babylon, the One World Trade Tower, what the ISS represents, the International Space Station, all the nations, one language, one trip from the Earth to the heavens, a monument to man's hubris, super symbolic. But again, we'll talk about the Boeing, because it's being compared to Apollo 13. And last year at this time, we were comparing the Titan submersible to Apollo 13. These things are not disconnected. There are no coincidences on the world stage. Okay, so to continue here, let's see who's in chat. Joined by Cubstar, Copesthetic, Symbia, Thirst for Truth, Elephant Tusks, Daniel Morris, Duas Impera, Linda Curtis, Fuzzy Frankenbeans. Elephant Tusk says, hello, DSP. Lovely chat last night. Yeah, we have our Discord open and our Gilded um, open for chats. And I see a lot of people going in. I'll spend more time in chats in the coming days. I'm restructuring everything in a good way. I'm freeing up more time and focusing more on this. Adora the Explorer says, love the new track. Nice follow-up to COVID Cooties, says Elephant Tusks. Yes, Auto Hooksology, the new track, is linked in the newsletter. So if you sign up at ips.monster or you sign up at Patreon, the last live stream notification has a link. Joined by Otto Hoaxer, Elephant Tusk says X doesn't come back until 2030. 
Well, the subgenie have been waiting for this Planet X to arrive with their UFOs. It's kind of a Poe, a parody of extremism, a church that's really a joke disguised as a church. But then the irony is that all of these religions are essentially uh, a Poe. Uh, what, what I mean by it is that they're all built on something fallacious. There's somebody somewhere uh, deceiving or duping a lot of people with some false claim to the authority, some divine mandate. And this is just another one of these cults, but they consciously designed it to be a cult. Doesn't mean they're not serious. JC says, greetings from the UK. Yeah, well, X Day, again, had a prophecy. On July 5th, 1998, the scheduled end of the world didn't happen, but it has been celebrated on July 5th every year since. Again, the supposition here is that we don't know what year it is. We don't know when we are. So I, I think they're just, right now, what is it, X Day 25 or something? And this is a cult that claims that the God of the Bible is a space alien. That's the bottom line. They're not flat earthers. Linda Curtis says, my blind beagle did not take the fireworks well. Lando Rock says, being ruptured sounds like a nice change from our soap opera reality. You nailed it. That's the whole point. They want people to want to be raptured. They want people to be so sick of the drama that they want to be raptured by aliens or by, I suppose, whatever's going to pick them up, angels. They all want out of here. And what I'm saying is that the elite want to push you out of here. They want to disabuse you of your enjoyment of life, to even believe that life is enjoyable. Environmentalists are just here to spoil your fun. And if they can overwhelm you with drama, they can certainly, they can certainly get you to uh, decide that maybe we ought to just go to Mars. Let's just sign up for the Mars bases. Let's get into the Hyperloops and follow Musk to a better world where there's no Republicans or MAGA hats or AR-15s. That's what they're doing. So you might be falling prey to cultural pessimism, which is something I definitely make it a point to watch out for. I don't want to accept the premise that things are getting worse. I actually run with the opposite. I'm like, well, maybe the big conspiracy is hiding the fact that things are getting really good. And the better they get, the less they have any power to really distract us from how good things are. All right, I want to talk about Candace Owen for a moment because she's been digging deep into, and, and there's a lot of celebrities now touching on this, and she's a celebrity. You might call an alt-right influencer, but she's just an actress. She doesn't believe what she says. Her husband's the CEO of Parler, if you remember the Parler uh, Twitter imitation that was taken down. A total player. She was behind, I mean, a game player. Uh, she was behind White Lives Matter with Ye. Helped destroy Ye's career. But my point of it is, this is a provocateur. Uh, she was acquired by the Daily Wire to say things that, if said by a white male, would be construed as racist and sexist. But now she's on this flat earth kick, but she's going deeper, and she's talking about the satanic underpinnings of NASA, JPL, the OTO, Aleister Crowley. She's going into all of this, but in a very superficial way, and she's framing it as, see, science and NASA is Satan. The media is satanic, is another thing she has said. So this Satan or satanic elite thing is part of a psyop and what she is doing is she's further driving a wedge between science and religion as though if you believe in science you're now following a satanic cult and you should in fact reject science and I reject that notion they have this progressive utopianism versus traditional rat, rat I guess you call it traditional values but the the far right radical, whatever you want to call them, they're really MAGA. They're going towards traditional values and older concepts of sin and evil. This is why the right wing has been saying, starting with Tucker Carlson, that aliens are evil. They're demons. Aliens are demons? But the left wing is like, we believe. Give us your tech. You're more evolved versions of us. So the left worships aliens. The right thinks they're demons. The right worships or believes in angels, and the left laughs at that. But these are the same myths, just updated. Sort of like the right doesn't believe in ocean levels rising from global warming. And the left does. That's because it's a neo-eschatology couched in the language of science. Now, she's not wrong in saying that science... Well, she is wrong. When she says science has become a religion and a pagan faith, she's actually wrong. 
uppercase science, scientism, you could argue, has become central to the one world religion, which is essentially what we get from our media, the world view we all share. And it certainly is using, again, the language of science, but it's different from lowercase science. Science is a belief system, not an ideology. You're not supposed to believe in science. It's something you do. So to be anti-science is to say that you're against fact-finding. You're against reality-testing claims, having standards of evidence. We should not reject science and then clutch Bibles. And I, again, I don't believe that she's really a Catholic. She converted very publicly, like a lot of these alt-right figures are doing. Uh, for, and they're, you know, they're proclaiming Christ is king. But to them, it's just a meme. But let me play this clip here. And we'll talk about it. This is because the more research I am doing, I am just mind blown. I am like, what is actually happening in our country? Please tell me any of you knew about the literal satanic origins of the NASA Apollo program, as in like every time the person let a jet propeller, they were like worshiping Santa, like saying satanic chant. This is what I mean by shallow. And she, she should read my book, Secret Religion of the Elite. Jack Parsons read the hymn to Pan. And they throw the word Satan into the mix. But Satan really isn't in the mix here. And the, one of the reasons they do this, it's probably deliberate obfuscation. Because NASA is a new iteration of the same religion she's a part of. You, you look at the Pope, St. Peter's Square, worshipping the obelisk three times a day. Yeah, the obelisk is still here today in a newer form. It's the rocket that takes you to the heavens. Space is the new heaven. So she's become Catholic, and she's criticizing NASA. Well, I'm sorry, but, but you're in NASA's cult. NASATology is just a new version of Christianity in many ways. It's the state religion. It's part of the state religion. NASATology combined with scientism. But let me add this, because for, her, for all her criticism about NASA being satanic, it just shows her ignorance about what she's a part of. So let me mention this, because I just learned about this yesterday. When Aldrin, when Buzz Aldrin first floated the idea of celebrating communion during the Apollo 11 mission to the moon, NASA responded with skepticism. The agency fended off a lawsuit filed after the astronauts broadcast themselves reading from Genesis during Apollo 8. Uh, the activist, who was an atheist, Madeline Murray O'Hare, said this was a violation of church and state. Intriguing. They don't recognize that NASA is the church. Uh, it's, I mean, I, I'm not being hyperbolic when I call it an Egyptian mystery school. I know exactly what I'm describing here. But it says here, the Church of Astronauts still celebrates Lunar Communion Sunday. Webster Presbyterian Church still celebrates Lunar Communion Sunday every year on the Sunday closest to the July 20th anniversary of the moon landing. According to this Presbyterian Church, which they call it the Church of Astronauts, it's been the spiritual home of many astronauts. But the point of it is this, and it didn't come out for years. Buzz Aldrin did the Catholic Mass and celebrated the Holy Communion on the moon. And this is very consistent with what I've been saying all along. It says here, Aldrin took a moment to read from John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, I in him, will bear much fruit. You can do nothing without me. And then he performed the Christian ritual, making him the first person to celebrate a religious rite on a heavenly body other than earth. I poured the wine into the chalice the church had given me, recalled the astronaut in a 1970 article. One-sixth gravity of the moon, the wine curled slowly and gracefully up the side of the cup. It was interesting to think that the very first liquid ever poured on the moon and the first food eaten there were communion elements. And there's more. But I think you get the point. The Pope blessed them. They flew up to the new unifying heaven. You see, because we have many competing versions of heaven. Christian heaven, Muslim heaven. You have the various competing versions of it. Then you have atheists who don't believe in heaven. Well, how do you get everybody into the same box? You create a meta heaven. You, you create a heaven that's an umbrella under which all of the other ones fall, which is outer space. Same way to get there. Worship the obelisk, which represents the sun god, the god of ascension, god of resurrection. So you fly up into the heavens physically, 
in this new cult. That's how they do their rituals, but it's the same thing. They're not taking it to space. It's all allegory. But again, Candace Owen wouldn't understand, or rather does not understand that she's a part of the same thing that Aleister Crowley was a part of. Aleister Crowley, Jack Parsons, they weren't Satanists in the sense that Christians think Satanism exists. They practice the Gnostic Catholic Mass, and they worship Christ, but they worship him under a different name. They use different names, sun gods. These days it's uh, the beast. They actually refer to, that's what Aleister Crowley gets the beast from. But the beast represents the sun incarnate, just as the, the Babylon, in their view, is the goddess incarnate. But they have, it's Magdalene and Christ. It's the same split. We talk about this all the time. If you look at the rituals, look at the last few Super Bowls. You had Usher in white with a phoenix, which is a Christ symbol. You had Alicia Keys in scarlet red. This red and white represents Christ and Magdalene, or Babylon and Beast. You saw the same symbolism in the Super Bowl when Rihanna comes down with her pregnant belly showing, dressed in red, surrounded by white male dancers. Female in red, dancers in white, male dancers in white. You got the Kendrick Lamar video where he's, or performance, where he's got the crown of thorns and he's in white like Christ and then all the female dancers in red smearing blood on him. So again, the world religion, the cult of the obelisk, I call it, is repackaging their archaic religion, the true version of it, not the exoteric version that the masses are given with religion, and they're attaching it to science. Uh, scientism. I call it NASAtology, this new space religion. It's, is it different from Scientology? No. It's really not. NASAtology and Scientology are the same thing. Maybe NASAtology has better special effects. Scientology has better actors. Maybe they should combine forces. Actually, they kind of are. Tom Cruise is going to space. That's going to seal the deal. I think it's highly significant that Cruise spent so much time with Kubrick. But my point of it is, uh, this is the new iteration of the religion that Candace Owens is just now joining. You know, sort of like the mainstream media is the new church. And it's just repackaging, for all intents and purposes, the older worldview in a newer context. We're talking about mind control. So she goes to the archaic mind control and she says the new stuff is evil. It's like, I think they're both evil. I think the old world order and the new world order are the same thing. But that's classic controlled opposition uh, positioning here. And she's catching a lot of flack for it, but we'll get into that more. Another thing, this is on Drudge, it's her party now. Now, Biden's not quitting publicly, he's not making any intimations that he's going to leave, but this has been spreading quite um, a lot now that Kamala Harris would be the next one. And I remember talking about this a few times, because someone said, do you think that Michelle Obama is going to be it, or Governor Newsom? And like. If I had to go based off the meta script, if I have to go off of predictive programming, it's clearly Kamala. And I, I looked at this when I first started noticing all these various Netflix movies, like for example, or even Amazon Fallout. In Fallout, you have the character Betty Pearson. Highly significant. Uh, BP is the 216, and 216 is very much connected to this headshot narrative we've been talking about. And, you know, 216th day of the year, August 4th. This is something that's been a, a subject around here for some time. So I'm watching Fallout, and the scene where Betty Pearson steals more or less the election and takes over Vault 33. Uh, she's a strong black female character, lead character. And this is a reoccurring theme with Netflix. And they zoom in on a foosball table, upon which you have these characters, and one of them looks just like Donald Trump. And she had just had this coup and she cleaned up the mess. So there's no blood in the room. Nobody knows a massacre had occurred except for one drop of blood on the side of the Donald Trump character's head. That little Donald Trump figurine. And I thought, okay, this is signifying something with Kamala and Trump here. And this was in Fallout, just the, the latest season that just came out. And so then I was going back to a few other ones. Here's another one. DMZ, Demilitarized Zone. In the near future, Civil War... Torn America features a fearless medic, Alma, who sets out on a harrowing quest to find her son crossing the demilitarized zone of Manhattan. So DMZ has another Kamala Harris, uh, I think this is predictive programming, 
for Civil War and then who, who is in control after this. And then the movie Civil War that just came out, they insisted that a black woman shoot Donald Trump's character. They insisted on it. So this is very consistent with what I pointed out with Fallout. So there you go. Candace Owen says, I'm the number one trending scientist in the world. Today I will tell you about a time in America when a group of elitists who worship Satan via sexual rituals established NASA's Apollo program. And when I said Gnostic Catholic Mass, oh, her video's been taken down. They blocked it on copyright grounds. The shocking satanic origins of NASA. Comments are turned off. 287,000 views. Now, again, well, you know, if, if you're part of a religion and you don't know it has an esoteric side, that's on you. You know, if you don't know news is fake, that there's one version for the uninitiated and one for those in the know, it's on you. But what I learned by studying Crowley or the OTO and all these different cults is that it's all the same. They all have the same concepts. So here she is saying, oh, they worshipped uh, Satan versus or, or with these sex rites. Well, look at Dan Brown's books. He uncovers that Christianity is the same thing at its core. And, and you wouldn't know this unless you could read the symbols. And you can't read the symbols if you haven't been initiated. And if you're a believer who's been fully duped, you'll find this to be blasphemous and offensive. It's like, well, I mean, you know, truth sounds like hate or misinformation, you know, to some people. They don't want to confront it. I mean, why? what's so wrong about being wrong? Like, somebody please prove me wrong with anything. I would love that. Debunk me on chemtrails. Debunk me on flat earth. You know, prove something for me, and I will happily extol the opposite of what I think, and I will correct myself publicly. I will figure out how I got the wrong answers. Okay, continuing here. I have a lot of notes I want to get to, then we'll start taking phone calls. Synchromorpheus found this, and Leon, Leon Dion posted it too. This is um, the fact. We talked about this yesterday with Garrett, with Garrow, or how these, the Atlantic has this image that shows this Trump head wound in the artwork. Well, here's another one. Project 2025, the Heritage Foundation's plan to embrace bigger government during Trump's second term. Now, this Project 2025 has been hyped up by a lot of people in Trump's orbit, and now he's saying he has nothing to do with it. It's just like a laundry list of, of Christo-fascist platform, I guess, positions, things that they would want to implement. It's totally unworkable and unbelievable, but anyway, on this image you see Donald Trump and the, the art has like tears in it. So if you zoom in, it pretty much looks like you're looking at a bullet going toward his head. So th these, are, these are really strange graphics overall. This little triangle piece going right into his head. But this is par for the course. We have seen a lot of this kind of stuff. Bullet to the temple. And the Atlantic is owned by George Soros' son, Alex Soros, so that when they do something, they're obviously going to point fingers at Soros. It's part of the guard railing of the fakery. Here's another one. The case against Trump, a guide, 34 convictions, has all these arrows against a blood-red background pointing at Trump's face. So this is part of a reoccurring motif. It's a theme. They have been headshotting Trump in front of us subliminally for years, but it's been intensifying in recent months. It's undeniable at this point. It is a huge part of whatever's coming next. But they put it out there not because they have to tell us, because they're programming us to accept what they're about to do, and they want us to just accept it as inevitable, as the logical conclusion from what came before. Like, obviously this was going to happen. That's what they want you to think, so they're normalizing it. But they're not going to do anything for real. It's going to be fake. And most of the big channels out there that talk about this stuff on X, who are like, oh yeah, there's this predictive programming for a Trump head wound, they're all insistent that it's going to be real. That it's going to cause real chaos and real... It's like, no, it, it will be provocative, but we still have no reason to think that what follows it is going to be real. Can you point to anything real after any of these other events? It's, if it, it, for example, you have a 
number of events after 9-11, other terror attacks, and it's like these are all coming from the same production company. Catch up on some comments here, then we'll continue. Oh, well, let me play this clip here. This is RFK Jr. saying that he has so many skeletons in his closet that if they could vote, he would be the king of the world. He said this from the beginning. I am not a church boy. I am not running like that. I said in my, I had a very, very rambunctious youth. I said in my announcement speech that I have, a, I have, if I have so many skeletons in my closet, that if, that if they could all vote, I could run for king of the world. You're talking there. So he's got a mass grave of skeletons, and this is his way of not answering an allegation of something he did when he was 45 to a 20 year old, and he won't even comment on it. About the nanny situation. I mean, I, I, I do have to ask her. I mean, are you denying it or not? I'm not going to comment on it. All right. Well, what a coward. He's not going to comment on it. Brave enough to walk into an airport, into an airplane restroom, barefoot. Uh, not brave enough to comment on this horrible allegation, but by way of making an excuse, I had a rambunctious youth. I have so many skeletons in my closet. Insane. Okay, moving on. Uh, this, this is an interesting little connection. This is posted in our Gilded server today. If you haven't seen it yet, there's a movie called Roadhouse Out starring... Jake Gyllenhaal, which is a remake of an older movie, and Synchro Morpheus posted this. I haven't looked into it, but there's this Wade Wilson who looks like some Jake Gyllenhaal character. And I do see a striking resemblance between the way Wade Wilson has been presented as compared to Jake Gyllenhaal in Roadhouse. Now, what is the significance of this? A couple of things. First of all, in Roadhouse... Jake Gyllenhaal, who is a stand-in for Donald Trump. When you're talking about predictive programming, certain characters carry certain messages or archetypes that relate to real, quote, real-world stage characters. So Donnie Darko, Donnie J. Darko, Donnie Darko is Donald Trump. And this is revealed in the movie Donnie Darko in the subtext. It's hardly even subliminal. It, you know, it's almost like, like, leave the world behind. Some of these things are just out in your face, very obvious. But the connections between Trump and Donnie Darko are voluminous. The movie has 9-11 predictive programming, 2020 predictive programming, headshot predictive programming. And think about that for a minute. You know, people see The Shining, and they're like, look, Apollo 11 references. Yeah, but you're missing the 9-11 references. And then, if you think that's crazy, you wouldn't have known until decades later that it had predictive programming for COVID and more. I mean, some, you know, I'll say this. Kubrick didn't direct the moon landing, he directed the 20th century. I've heard that from someone. A Kubrickologist, or what do they call themselves? There are some people who have done such deep, granular, nuanced work into Kubrick, and even they often miss the bigger picture, the picture of fakery. I mean, it's really um, a fascinating topic, but anyway, in the movie Roadhouse, Jake Gyllenhaal exhibits what you would expect for someone who's playing a Trumpian character. He has the one-eye symbolism at the end where his face gets beaten. But interestingly, now as it compares to this killer, the killer, and this is a serial killer who's being executed for something, his name is Wade Wilson. And Wade Wilson is, is noted by his trademark tattoos. You know, his face has got these almost like Joker-esque lines all over his face. Um, heavily tattooed face. But the name... Wade Wilson stood out to me because in Roadhouse, Jake Gyllenhaal's character was referenced as Wade Waco. I'm like, well, Wade Waco is a character in a Western pulp paperback. And the story is called Death at the Double X. So you have the Double X, which most of you know, the Double Cross, the 4-4, uh, T2. There are so many ways that Donald Trump has been associated with the second coming symbolism. So death at double X, and then Waco is thrown in here. Wade Waco. Well, Waco is where Trump kicks off his campaign. Waco, American Apocalypse, had just aired on Netflix. Wade Waco, WW, kind of a 33, and there's all kinds of that 
built into this you know, the constant reference to the the burning man, the Christ, the second coming. I and mean, that was all over Dave Koresh at Waco, that he was the second coming of Christ. So again, it's all very well interconnected here. And the roadhouse connects possibly to this killer. Now, a couple more things about this individual. Wade Wilson, Florida killer, shares his name with Marvel Comics character Deadpool. So my God, that's fascinating. So his name is consistent with the character called Deadpool. He does look quite a lot like Jake Gyllenhaal in Roadhouse in that photo, the way he's been presented. And it's important to look at the first impressions. You know, What are the main images they're putting out there to convey their messaging? Wade Wilson shares his name with Marvel Comics character Deadpool, convicted of two brutal murders. Not sure why they would even bring that up unless it had a meaning to it, because he's not the only person with that name, obviously. Okay, so we've covered that. I want to get into the RV explosion, because this may also connect to something that we've been discussing. So we had the RV in Peabody exploded, and three were injured. This was on July 2nd. It was a grandfather, a father, and a son. I don't know the meaning of it necessarily, but it happened at 3.30 p.m. As Cinco Morpheus said, still waiting on the names of the victims. I bet they will be Metascripty. And this really first caught our attention because one of the individuals who was a, a crisis actor describing the scene was wearing a, a shirt that said Napalm Death for some uh, grindcore heavy metal band. So Napalm Death. It seemed like some kind of an inside joke, so we're still kind of analyzing this particular event. But I wanted to point out the timing of it, and the father and son thing is kind of interesting. Like, for example, the father and son in the Titan that imploded last year. So there may be some deeper connection between the RV, this implosion, we're looking at it. And here's another thing. NASA scientist warns the Boeing Starliner could be the next Apollo 13. NASA scientists warn it could be the next Apollo 13. Space is a place you never want to be stranded. So Apollo 13 was an, uh, an attempt at the moon, but I think they had a oxygen tank disaster. Seventh crewed mission meant to land on the moon. 56 hours into the mission, they had an explosion. So there was this period of time where it was uncertain. You know, it, this is where you get the Houston, we've had a problem phrase, or Mandela effect. The malfunction was caused by an explosion and rupture of oxygen tank number two. So the significance here, though, is they're lost in the abyss. Just like the Titan submersible, we're lost in the abyss. There's got to be some deeper meaning to it, too. And notably, of course, while the Boeing Starliner is up there, you have the Russian space satellite blowing up and putting everybody into a defensive posture, ducking for cover. Duck and cover for space junk. Get under your desks. Is that what's next? We have the duck and cover for bowl cut shooters, duck and cover for nukes, duck and cover for space junk should be next. Okay, moving on. I had a couple of comments. Starting over one, and by the way, uh, those of you who are members, I'm uploading a daily a uh, 10 minute or so video called the IPS morning deprogram. If you want to catch up on that, I set up my mobile studio so when I travel, laptop, microphone, camera, everything's ready to go. But um, I uploaded one this morning. I had a response from Starting Over One who said, Amazon has a new movie, Space Cadets. Check it out. Seems very interesting. Appears to be about fake astronauts, ironically. Now, I wonder if this is connected to. Space Cadets, the TV show, which was 10 episodes. It was like considered to be one of the greatest hoaxes of all time from 2005. 10 consecutive nights. Group of starry-eyed applicants undergo intensive training in Russia before being flown into low Earth orbit. And you find out that they never left the ground. They didn't know. And this was showing the power of the immersive illusion. But one of the things that I like to highlight about this is, how do you convince these 10 people they're in space? You don't. Five people were convinced they were in space. Five of them were liars. 
Five were actors, Confederates, working on the other side, maintaining the illusion by preventing the five who didn't know what was really going on from forming conspiracy theories. If the five people who knew what was going on didn't have the other five, they would have figured it out sooner. And that's where we're at right now. That's why we call out gatekeepers, controlled opposition, guardrailers. You know, here we are in our simulated spacecraft, spaceship Earth, you know, with our, our worldview completely supplied to us from this authoritative source. We believe whatever it's projecting to us, and it's echoed by people around us, which creates this effect that, yeah, there's a consensus. We all agree on this. Well, no, we don't agree. Um, we've been duped because we're space cadets, and those guys are actors and liars. It's the lie world order. I and mean, this was just like a, a Truman show, if you think about it. A reality TV show presented as real. Everybody's laughing at them. That's kind of what happened here. But the fact of it is, it's fakeable. And you might laugh at them and say, oh, look at these dupes. Tricked into thinking they're going in space. Ha ha. Well, you believe in space. So, ha ha. You know, from the perspective of the uh, programmers, you are all space cadets. And I think outer space is just a metaphor for inner space. They control outer space, they control our minds, they control our worldview. It's the space between your ears they control. And I'm not a space cadet. I don't believe in any of that stuff. I know it's a movie. Deleted user121 said, referring to the LA riot guy, it's like on, oh yeah, let me mention this, because I've been describing the connection between James Cameron, the Rodney King beating, and the LA riots, and I suggested he directed those riots. And I'm just trying to, you know, figure out what is the scale of fakeability here. And I think we need to really think about this. Don't be quick to dismiss the idea that they could fake a riot. Look at Kenosha. 9-11, for example. 9-11, you had 88 drills. It's a lot of personnel to do simulation. You can... I mean, can I'm in a city... You know, here there's a lot of movies being filmed. It's interesting because you see these signs that tell you where the crews are gathering. It's very subtle. But if you didn't know what you were looking at, and I know because I was in film studies, so I recognize when these unions are around producing films, they make these movies in plain sight. They could block off entire sections of a city. It, you know, it's like a military operation in a way. It's, it's a psyop. You can psyop anything. You could psyop riots. Just because you see smoke, just because you hear sirens, doesn't mean it's a real riot. Even if you see people running around with stolen goods, uh, yeah, there's a point where there's this overlap. Opportunism. Useful idiots. And, and this is the part that's worth studying. You know, for January 6th, for example, it's entirely feasible. In fact, it's, it's the fact, it is a fact that during Trump's speech, the action had already started. It was staged. Those were all actors. No outsiders were involved. And if someone had decided to go partake in the riot, like let's say you wanted to go run up the hill and go into Pelosi's office, well, you wouldn't make it on time because it's a 45-minute walk from the ellipse to where the action was happening. You wouldn't have made it. So I'm, I'm discussing, you know, well, how much of the Rodney King thing was fake? The beating was fake. The beating was filmed by somebody who was filming a James Cameron movie in progress about an evil cop. Terminator 2 has an evil cop, a Derek Chauvin. Again, this is all symbolic, very meaningful. The police represent... I mean, Derek Chauvin is Derek Western Chauvinism. The Proud Boys, Western Chauvinists versus BLM. It's all code and symbol. So I'm looking at the fact, and this is what James Cameron recently revealed, that what set off the riots was the Rodney King beating, filmed on a tape that was previously, a few minutes before, filming Terminator. Is it ironic? Is it a coincidence? No, it's a clue. Anyway, deleted user said, it's like the people in 9-11 who will say, I saw planes. I saw planes at the building, but they didn't. I saw planes at the building on television, and they fed that into what they thought they saw in 9-11 in real life. There was a taxi driver who said he saw no planes at the building. I believe him. What did Nixon say? Americans believe anything as long as they see it on television. Exactly. Excellent points raised there. So again, I'm uh, open to the possibility that it could be totally staged and faked. And anything that happens that's real is being done by perhaps people, um, you know, crisis actors are often dragged out of prisons. 
we have personal experience with this, the IPS. We have dealt with individuals who should have been in cages, who were set loose on the streets to do disinformation campaigns on behalf of uh, feds. Okay, moving on. We'll continue to follow this Boeing Starliner thing, but the fact that it's being compared to Apollo 13 is ominous. Okay, let me catch up on your comments. Quite a lot going on. Okay, here we go. Linda Curtis says, Sirius in September is heading up farther away from the Earth, taking the heat with it. Sirius had to die on 9-11. Well, 9-11, of course, is the Coptic New Year. So you have that New Year connection. On New Year's Day, it's all about Sirius. And then you have the uh, he, uh, the, the heliacal rising of Sirius over the sun, which would denote the new year in Egypt, but also the floods. So there's these reoccurring themes here. All right. Lando Rock says, being raptured sounds like a nice change. Oh, here it is. Uh, Elephant Tusk says, Sirius controls our world. That was the Crack Gwyn. And of course, the IPS appreciates the support very much here. And and what does the Kraken represent? And that was from Dua Simpera. Uh, the Kraken is what I'm describing the self-aware demographic of auto-hoaxers to be. When they become self-aware and realize the power that we have to initiate a paradigm shock to the system. That's kind of what's going to happen. It's going to be in conjunction with the AH-2024 planet killer asteroid, which is going to hit the world stage this summer as well. So feed the Kraken if you want. You're feeding the Kraken just by posting, just by sharing your perspectives on these various topics as we are enlarging the parallel media separate from Trutherville. Cubstar says RFK started the Dog Day rituals this year. Yeah, I even think hot dogs have something to do with it. Daniel Moore said, never had a dog that was afraid of fireworks. Yeah, it's not all dogs. Some dogs freak out. It doesn't make them commies that hate freedom. Fuzzy Frankenbean said, my puppy didn't flinch. The, the one I was sitting just curled up behind my, my ankles, like I was on the couch, and it's just hiding behind me so I could block it. It does the same thing during thunderstorms. Like, so if there's... You know, incoming fireworks, mortar shells, lightning bolts, like, I'm going to take the hit first. Daniel Moore says, why so serious? So that is interesting that you bring this up. Because Joker, why so serious, is obviously a reference to the Dog Star. When the Dark Knight Rising came out, it was in July, during the dog days of summer, when the Joker killer went in to shoot up the Aurora Theater. And that's when I started to realize, okay, Batman and Joker are being used in these psyops. These movies are being used to carry messaging. And as it's evolved, you can see that Joker represents the left, the oppressed, the Antifa, the wokester. Batman represents the right, the Christo-fascist, the MAGA, the vigilante, basically the, the militiaman. So you have the Proud Boys, Soy Boys, dialectic built into Batman and Joker, with all the other symbolism there as well. Cubstar says, the goat excuse is because Capricorn is rising and Capella is setting on the start of the dog days. Yeah, the RFK Jr. story went from it's a dog to it's a goat. And remember last year, we were talking about the symbol of the crab, the kraken, and the titan submersible, like a crustacean going you know, beneath the water sinking, and the significance of it all. Because there's quite a lot of symbolism here into this stuff. And... I think it was last year, RFK was out there doing push-ups and flexing, and he's all, you know, roided out and stuff. And I thought, you know, this is probably symbolic as well. Nothing he does isn't, but it must have some kind of meaning, I, I was thinking. We'll probably get back into it, but for him to be holding a roasted dog as we enter dog days, yeah, there's something there. And I'm pretty sure last year he was also involved in something similar. Didn't we see him picking up a snake which is a theme in that Trump-based movie, All the, or Men in Fool, 
he picks up a snake, which is heavily associated with Trump and the snake story. And one more thing, we're talking about the Trump getting killed in all these movies and these these characters in movies representing world stage people. That this is absolutely the case with A Man in Fool. Donald Trump is Charlie Coker in that movie. He's the real estate magnate who's falling from grace. His enemy is a mayor of Chicago who's based on Obama. Obama takes him down. He dies at the end. You know, it's 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 so obvious to me that we're looking at a, a a method of propagandizing the public with ideas and scenarios and narratives, drilling it in, boring neuro pathways, making everything that they present on the fake news seem plausible. Okay, moving on. So many comments. Elephant Tusk says, we don't know who we truly are. Well, we don't know what year it is. We know what year they say it is. And there's some discrepancies. You know, we talk about, for example, the significance of 1776, July 4th. Well, that was the year of the founding of America, but also the founding of the Illuminati, but also the starting date for the building of the Tower of Babel, according to their lore. In other words, Masonic lore has a different calendar system that they work off of goes back 4,000 more years so for them 1776 is actually referenced to 1776 AL the year of light Anna Lucius when the Tower of Babel's construction begins so the beginning of America and the beginning of the Tower of Babel are related with the number 1776 interestingly because you add 4,000 years 1776 AD was 5776 if you go off of their calendar. And what does that mean? Well, look at the back of the dollar bill. It has a pyramid with 1776 on it. 5,776 is how tall the Great Pyramid in Giza is in inches. So you have a connection between Giza's pyramid, the dollar bill, the Tower of Babel, and the founding of America. And then you can connect this to the World Trade Tower, the One World Trade Tower, which opened on 11-3-2014, 13 years after the two towers fell. And the One World Trade Tower is 1,776 feet high. And from the base of it, and I've seen this on Reddit and a few people have pointed this out, From when you walk up to it and you look up, it has the appearance of being a pyramid. And from afar, it's obviously a syringe, which is highly significant. But here you have a pyramid. That's the one World Trade Tower that replaced the twins. That's the Tower of Babel pyramid on the back of your dollar bill. 1776 feet high. 1776 Anu Lucius. Tower of Babel. America as Babylon. New York represented as Babylon at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine with these carvings that preceded 9-11 that showed the 9-11ing of New York as Babylon. Okay, I want to continue through my notes here. There are so many great comments. I don't want to miss any. And phones are open if anyone wants to call in. The number is on the screen. For those of you who are just listening, if you're at TuneIn or Radio King or any of these, uh, Radio.net, Paranormal Radio. I think on Paranormal Radio, we were like number eight last year. Even though we're not paranormal, we somehow get lumped in with that. But if you're listening there, the number is 563-999-3664. The Incomplete has said, Hey, all, heard an interesting chemtrail take earlier. They are a thing, but it's a trap to get us to end airplane travel. Narrative building. Yeah, that's part of the story here. They want to disabuse you of the idea that you should be able to freely travel because traveling kills Gaia. You shouldn't be walking on Gaia's face. You should be locked down at home. And if you believe the science, you'd be locked down right now. It's like, you don't believe the science if you're not wearing a mask and a space junk helmet. Like, you're just obviously brave. You're either brave or you're apathetic or you don't really believe it. Now, this is likely the case. They want you to feel bad about everything, especially travel. Uh, but as far as the chemtrail notion, yeah. I would say that the chemtrail theory psyop was put out there to convince the right wing to have the same opinions as the left wing when it comes to man's effect on the world. 
and it is a PSYOP. And I get a lot of chemtrail enthusiasts really mad at me for uh, rug pulling that whole thing, and they should be thanking me. In fact, let me show you this, because I, I've been going this back and forth with Wits It Gets It, and today he finally he finally owned up to it that, no, you can't make a claim affirmatively that these things exist, that your, your claim is necessarily going to be the product of logical fallacies. And when you go through these logically fallacious arguments one by one, you realize, you know, there's really not a lot there to substantiate it. You're left with a rumor that you it's not tenable, considering that there's information out there that could easily uh, debunk it. So let me go ahead and play or show you what he said. He wrote me in a private message. He said, I, now again, he's kind of being ambiguous, but I'll show you where he affirmed that I'm right. He said, I didn't make an argument. Now, he, now did he make an argument? I went up to him and I said, you um, cannot claim to me that chemtrails are real without lying or using fallacies. And I called him out because he is frequently citing formal and informal logical fallacies in all of his debates. So I recognize that this guy cannot honestly make the claim because he would know how bad his claim is. So I was kind of calling him out on it and he said, I didn't make an argument. You asked me a question and I said this, what we do know and what we don't know is that we lack further concrete evidence to make a claim. So I highlighted this. I lack further concrete evidence to make a claim. I got wits it gets it to admit that he cannot make a claim. He doesn't have evidence for chemtrails. And I said to him, this is one of the points I made. You would reach the conclusion that you can't make a good faith claim about chemtrails and that you would likely obfuscate it because you don't want your subscribers to know that you deny chemtrails. He also called me names. So I said, calling me R-worded is that homonym and chemtrail pushers can't make honest claims, so they call names. The fact that he's calling me names means that he lost the debate. I don't return fire. If, if all they can do is call you names, they're basically saying, you won, I, I can't argue against your, your logic here, so I'm happy to inform everybody that chemtrails is a psyop and wits it, gets it, gets it. We have another JFK Jr. contender. I know negative 48 died last year, and 107 is kind of like the only other person who has any sort of credibility among QAnoners, and Vincent Fuchsia kind of disappeared. So I'm like, well, who's going out there collecting all the JFK Jr. groupies? Well, here we have someone. His name was Edward X. Young. And Edward, Edward um, Young has been pointed out by 777 and 666 as being JFK Jr. And I've looked through this, and he drops hints to lead people to believe this is true. Uh, he's been at every single Trump rally. And weirdly enough, he's an actor who's been in many movies. And his movies Hi, is... all have weird kind of allusions to Hillary Clinton. and J It's just weird, but... Let me play this clip here. This is Edward X. Young being asked about his possible secret identity. Yes, and some fireworks in the background, a nice cookout barbecue, and it's a beautiful day. Hardly a, a cloud or raindrop in the sky. And I am Michael S. O'Neill. I am Ed Friend. You can follow me at mo fifty one fifty twenty four. And Ed, I gotta ask you something. I, I really, I, I really have to ask this because this, this, this has been going around. Are you, are you JFK Jr.? Look, I, look, I could neither confirm nor deny those allegations. But... I could neither confirm nor deny these allegations. Here's a. Right, that's right. Wow. And not only that, I drove almost 500 miles to get here, 498 miles from Point Pleasant, New Jersey. My name is Edward X. Young. And uh, yes, this is going to be... We have voice comparisons with Edward oh, X. Young. I'm Edward X. Young. I'm from uh, Brick, New Jersey. That's in South Jersey. 
he wears the green MAGA hat. But there have been comparisons with he, his voice and JFK Jr.'s, and some believe he's the same. Uh, my, my question here is, though, uh, why would you let people believe this? Why would you lead them on? Why would you not deny it and say, no, that's preposterous? Uh, because this is a grift, and he has a lot of people, uh, probably a lot of, again, JFK Jr. groupies, who believe that he is the man. All right, back to your comments. We had a few more things I wanted to get to. Very busy chat room today, by the way, which is great. Duas and Paris says, Spaceballs personnel are all a-holes. Oh, how many a-holes do we have on the ship? I've seen Spaceballs. I may need to rewatch it. I'm sure it has some relevant um, context. I mean, it's probably just truth in plain sight. Kevin Mooring says, why hasn't Musk rescued Starliner? We're still waiting. And he has, but he has, I think he's offered. Didn't they have Musk send some like submarines to save some divers once? And I'm sure that was a fake story. I'll have to look into it. Okay, Kevin Mooring says, King and Perry both died in a pool. Oh yeah, Matthew Perry. And who's the king that died in a pool? Ollie Goering says, Musk hasn't rescued Scarliner because they're gauging the masses. Probably a lateral data mining operation. Yeah, it could be. You know, they're, they could be, in fact, trying to figure out who knows what, and they want to contain it. That's a lot of what we see going on here. Mango Penguin says, there was a temple shot in the new Beverly Hills Cops movie. Oh, really? And, and Trump was in this place... He was speaking at a place called Temple. And nearby, yeah, Donald Trump at Temple University. And nearby, there was a sheriff or a police officer who was shot in the temple, shot in the head during that event, which I thought hmm, seems a little psyopy. Echo Charlie says Sirius is a binary star. We might have a second son, too, I heard whispered. Okay, let's see. Duas and Paris says, Pretty gangsta telling everyone you're a snake knowing they'll vote for you anyway. Well, I remember he said that he could walk down Fifth Avenue and take out a gun and blow somebody away and they'd still vote for him. And I think he's right. Kevin Mooring says, Ryan Garcia is in the news again. What was his last thing? Oh, this is bad. Okay. Good drugs, I suppose. I mean, he was Me Too at Bohemian Grove, turned it into this big publicity stunt, and told everybody it was a publicity stunt. Then he started making claims that Vegas and Los Angeles were going to have earthquakes on June 6th, and nobody left. Like, I had expected that Vegas and Los Angeles, that all the residents would have temporarily relocated, because, of course, earthquakes didn't happen. Don't know why they didn't take him seriously. WBC expels Ryan Garcia after he says, quote, I'm KKK and will kill that George Floyd N again. Ryan Garcia expelled after racist Islamophobic rant. Well, he has um, enough money for all the drugs and whatever for the rest of his life. But you can't really take that back. It's one thing saying that you were two years old at Bohemian Grove being trafficked by Andrew Tate, which is somewhat believable. But you know, that's just fantasy. People can ignore it. But this is, uh, yeah, this is beyond the pale. I'm suggesting, I mean, I'm thinking drugs. The guy doesn't have a filter. No filter. And by the way, George Floyd isn't dead. Although I did find this, I guess he was a channeler or someone. There's this near-death experience that was being described on YouTube where Someone claims they saw George Floyd in hell. I'm like, George Floyd in hell? Didn't he die a martyr's death? No, he didn't. So if you saw him in hell, it's because crisis actors go to hell for lying. Which means that maybe George Floyd did die, but he didn't die on 5-25-2020. It would have been after. Uh, 
Jessica Lynn says 888 plus 888 is 1776. Yeah, and in Christian gematria numerology, Christ is 888. So 1776, you could look at as a second coming number. It has that connotation built into it. And these numbers and, and all stuff, you know, we talk about it all the time because it's there. You know, we're not extrapolating anything. We're not putting numbers into calculators and trying to come up with new configurations. We're just pointing out what they describe, what's on your dollar bill, and what it really means. Duas and Paris says, Giza Pyramid is made of 2.3 million stones, 2.3 trillion mission dollars on September the 10th. Okay, I was just talking about this earlier today, how the number 23 is heavily associated with the dog star, Sirius. Uh, throughout all of the occult literature, Robert Anton Wilson's books, which later figure prominently as inspirations for Jim Carrey movies, which all reference Sirius. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld said the Pentagon lost $2.3 trillion mysteriously before 9 11. They're going to fact check it, but you know, what do facts mean on the world stage? It means designated facts, and they could change at any time. This is the desert of the designated real. For those who can't discern reality for themselves, they got to wait for the authorities to tell them what is real and what is not real. Here we have uh, Jim Stewartson commenting, seven years ago, the real Roseanne had a number one TV show. Then she became QAnon. Now she promotes this, quote, there are eight or nine continents or whatever the number is, and there's a magnetic mountain in the middle. So here's Roseanne Barr hanging out with deep inside the rabbit hole. And, okay, Jim Stewart blocked me. I can't play it. What's with all these people on Twitter blocking me? I mean, I, I, could, I could print out every block notice, and I could have a wallpaper. This person has blocked you. Yep, you're blocked. Okay, well, anyway, it's Roseanne Barr and deep inside the rabbit hole, and they are talking about the possibility of there being new continents. Okay, moving on. Elephant Tusk says, Lucifer brought in invader races from the Black Sun cartel to fight against the Veneer Elohim. That's some pretty good melding of, of sci-fi and religious mythology. And I think this is all by design. I think aliens are a purposeful creation designed to replace angels. These are angels that atheists will believe in. Think about it. There's no difference between angels and aliens. But atheists don't believe in angels. They believe in aliens, though. Now, there's no difference between heaven and space. You're just talking about this fake place where you project these ideal conditions that you want to bring down to earth. But atheists believe in the space heaven. Atheists would laugh if you told them that their wicked behaviors are angering God and that they would be flooded. And then they will turn around and tell you, your big SUV and your carbon-heavy lifestyle is going to trigger the wrath of Gaia, and she's going to flood you off the face of the earth. You're going to be wiped off. It's like, wait a minute here. It just sounds like a repackaged flood myth to me. And if you dig deeper, you'll find that, yeah, it is, in fact. Symbolism. It all matters. You know, they tell you. You have the arc storm. You have the weather satellite. And, of course, NOAA, National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, symbolized by the dove. In the Bible, Old Testament, NOAA is symbolized by the dove. Additionally, of course, you have the symbol of the Ark represent... This is all just mythology. You know, Noah's being advised by an angel. Well, that's, that's the weather satellite. It's all repackaged mythology. Echo Charlie says, Wow, subtle pyramid based on perspective. Yes, you walk up to the giant syringe, and it turns into a pyramid. The One World Trade Tower syringe becomes a pyramid representing the Tower of Babel. Right there in Megaopolis. Again, Francis Ford Coppola, Megaopolis, 
predicted the Russian satellite that just exploded and almost took down the ISS. The ISS is a continuation of the same symbol. The sinking Titanic, the sinking Twin Towers, the One World Trade Towers, the Space Needles. These are all contiguous and it's all one monolithic structure and mission and it represents this one world and one world view. So the fact that the ISS could have been taken down by a Russian satellite is highly significant, especially that it was projected in a movie, Megaopolis, about New York. And again, Megaopolis, Tower of Babel, Man's Hubris, One World Order, about to fall. And Megaopolis, again, pulled because of 9-11. Kevin Mooring says, Joker references every day I suspect until Joker 2. Joker 2 comes out on 10-4. 10-4, which was the date Sputnik went into space, if you believe it. Buzzing Fret says, good term, IPS enthusiasts. Yeah, we're trying to vote on a, what, what, what do we call them? Chem boofers? Chemtrail huffers? Cloud shouters? Or chemtrail enthusiasts? I'm trying to come up with it. Okay. Elephant says, you often talk about predictive programming, but I never hear you speak of films like They Live and television shows like V. Oh yeah, They Live. I speak of They, Li they Live quite a bit. Um, it, you know, if, if you're a mind war inoculated listening to IPR, you wear the They Live glasses. But that's John Carpenter. And John Carpenter's movies are hugely significant. In fact, the, the recent movie Free Guy with the annoying Ryan Reynolds is essentially... A retelling of they live he puts on the glasses to see through the NPC matrix and tries to wake someone up in fact he tries to wake up his friend who's a black security guard and they fight and he can't force the guy to put on the glasses to see through the matrix one of the most famous scenes in they live is Roddy Piper fighting the other character who's black trying to get him to put on the glasses like they just mirrored that scene and they mirrored that dynamic and the point of it is it's kind of like a, a matrixy type thing in that sense. But in They Live, it's Martians that have dominated the world. They control the media. And when you put on the glasses, you can see the meaning behind the messaging. Oh, these billboards are telling you obey, consume, reproduce. These, all the media is controlled this way. And when someone sees through it, those on the inside notify each other. We have one who can see. That movie's great. I would also recommend In the Mouth of Madness if you want to understand how the world works. Like To really grasp how the world works at its most fundamental level, I think that movie would be it. Because it's about reality filters and the mass agreed upon collective delusion and who authors this and the effects that it has. In, they, no, sorry, in this John Carpenter In the Mouth of Madness, it's about an author named Sutter Kane whose books are so popular that it begins to create a bit of a problem. Uh, people are basically living in this other version of reality. They're getting so immersed in it, sort of like converting to a religion. You know, you can imagine someone who spends a few months immersed in religious texts and they go through this, co this conversion. Well, they're converting into this other world, this horror Stephen King-like world. But the idea is that everybody is so hooked on these books that it becomes more popular than the Bible. It becomes the dominant influence. And then reality itself begins to conform and becomes this nightmare world. And the protagonist is a private investigator trying to find this author. And he finds him in a castle where he's typing on a typewriter and behind him is this black void. And this is essentially the chaos that precedes creation. You know, God speaks the word and all the chaos becomes creation. Well, Sutter Kane is usurped God. And now he is translating the chaos. He's the primary author. And his books create the filter through which all of us experience this reality. It's the dominant influence. Of course, anybody who's not with it is, you know, they're wiped out and killed by those who are converted to this thing. But I mean, it's, it's a horror movie. It's kind of a comedy. But I think it does describe how things really work. Just replace Sutter Kane with mainstream media. Replace the books with all the different platforms 
and it perfectly explains it all. And at the end, the his name is a uh, is, is, is it Ed Harris? Uh, who's the the actor in in the Mouth of Madness? In the end, he's he's the only person who's sane, but he's locked up in an insane asylum. And it's a uh, yeah Sam Neill, the guy from Jurassic Park. So he's the only sane person in the world, and he realizes he's in a movie. So he's watching his own life play out on a movie, and he's eating popcorn and laughing as the movie ends. So the whole message is that he comes to this paradigm shock. He realizes we're all in a movie. And I think this is a big tell. I think this is actually how things are. We are, And the Mouth of Madness is, uh, I think it's a reference to the, the portal to the subconscious and the control they take over that. But we will talk about John Carpenter and more and other. I want to do a deep dive on every single one of these metascriptors. Echo Charlie says, Biden's forehead is controlled by Jim Henson behind the curtain. Yeah, look, when I look at Biden's expressions, he always looks animatronic to me. It looks like a special effect, like one of these monster movie faces. It doesn't look like a normal person. And I, I've seen Vice President Joe Biden. That's a normal man, aging normally. Looks normal. And then out comes this kind of pinch-faced, beady-eyed, tiny nose guy with a much smaller skull. And I don't know. I can't say for sure. You know, Is that an act? Probably. It wouldn't surprise me. He's acting like an Alzheimer's patient. He's acting like a, a senile um, elderly person. But... It could be an act. I'm not saying it's Jim Carrey. Don't know. But as scripted as things are, I don't think they take chances. I don't believe there's anything random here. So I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable saying that that is some actor in a creepy mask. Now V, I will have to rewatch it. But V has a lot of significance, I believe. But um, it was also a huge... I think inspiration for David Icke, similar to John Carpenter's They Live, aliens controlling everything. Ryler05 said there was a supposed time traveler who said that Florida would be permanently underwater in 2025. I think that was Al Gore, but he just moves the goalpost. Although, I did see something about this. I'll see if I can find it really quick. There's quite a lot to talk about today. I'm just scratching the surface. You know, big development, dog days kick in, which tends to signify a quickening of the psyops of the summer. Okay, we talked about the hot dogs, the scorcher. A machete, Danny Trejo, was on some kind of a 4th of July parade, and somebody threw a water balloon at him, and the 80-year-old actor went over to punch the man, and kind of a short melee. The headline says he got knocked out. I don't think he got knocked out. He bounced up off the pavement and went back into the fight. Not, not bad, I mean... I was watching this thinking it could be a PR stunt. They're saying it's just water, it's just water, it's just a water balloon. So there you see Danny in his white shirt. And we brought him up the other day because we were talking about Robert De Niro at the Trump trial and how De Niro was in Machete playing a Trump-like character. And Machete, played by Danny Trejo here, uh, snipes him. But here he is, getting into a fight, down on the ground, and bounces right back up. It could be WWF-style promotion for perhaps a movie he's doing. I don't trust anything when it comes to these celebrities doing stuff on the ground, uh, on the streets, on the world stage. It could be a promotion for something. Fake until proven real. 
Okay, moving on. Nick Fuentes is very prolific on Twitter. And he's mad at Trump because Trump has disavowed Project 2025. And he says, I hate to say I told you so, but Trump's disavowal of Project 2025 is the latest and most undeniable proof that the second term will be plagued by the same personnel problems as the first. And so I asked him, since Daddy Trump has turned his back on Project 2025, will you cease doing the Trump accordion hands? A lot of people who uh, worship Trump, like Fuentes, adopt his speaking style. Tim Pool was speaking with his Trump affectation for months. I was like, why is this guy talking like Trump? I kept calling it out and he stopped. And by the way, there's no E in Tim Pool. And Tim Pool is paying for Alex Stein to go to Antarctica. Another kind of side note here. But Nick Fuentes was recently at some event, a Charlie Kirk event. And he gets kicked out and he gives this speech. And I'm noticing that when he talks, he moves his, 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 you know, his hands are wide open like jazz hands. And then he's flapping them like wings in front of his body. Or like he's playing an invisible accordion. And like that's familiar. Where have I seen that before? And yeah, it's it's a Donald Trump move. So they mimic his voice. They emulate his gesticulations. But now that he's made Fuentes mad, is Fuentes still going to be trying to imitate Trump? I don't know. We'll see. I kind of think that Nick Fuentes should just quit America first and get a summer job like at the mall or something because he's approaching 30 he has no real life experience he went straight from high school to internet uh, white nationalist just totally disgusting character and it's not too late to get real life experience his whole existence is the internet is memes he is a living meme at this point and uh, there's an expiration date on this stuff you know, I see a lot of these characters. It's like, you should just go back to 2016. What are you even carrying this forward for? But there's no way he could be Trump, is what I'm saying. Because Trump was Trump before he ran for president, before it became a popularity contest for him, before it was all just surface and and symbolism. You know, he was a businessman. He had established his reputation um, in commerce, in real estate. And so he had this history. He had a reputation. And then he brings that to the table. Nick Fuentes brings nothing to the table. You know, just someone who is a popular meme spouter to his targeted demographic. It's kind of a fake uh, reality. I don't know if he has, again, it, it just doesn't seem like in the long term it's going to go anywhere. And he hitched his wagon to Donald Trump. Like, how long is that going to last? Let's revisit your comments, and then let me see if anyone has called in. Again, the number is on the screen if you want to call in. Tomorrow is the anniversary of the explosion of the Georgia Guidestones, 7-6. It's also George W. Bush's, I guess, 78th birthday, in case anybody's celebrating. You're probably having a big party over at the tomb. The whole thing, the blowing up of the Guidestones, was a Skull and Bones ritual. Skull and Bones Society, George W. Bush, 76 on 76, 2022. The Georgia Guidestones, which opened on 322, 1980, after 42 years, were destroyed. There's a big story behind it. We'll revisit that tomorrow, though. Lloyd posted this. Bill Gates is backing a high-altitude experiment on radical climate change solution, creating a chemical cloud that can cool the Earth. It's called solar geoengineering, and it's highly controversial. So I want to point this out to chemtrail enthusiasts. Every time I debunk chemtrails, they say, but my geoengineering. Sorry, geoengineering is a purely hypothetical solution to a fake problem. These headlines that say Bill Gates is going to block the sun tend to exaggerate the claim. And if you follow these articles, you'll find out geoengineering is untested and doesn't work. And it's a hypothetical solution to a problem that doesn't even exist. So Bill Gates is not going to block the sun. 
but this is a talking point for those who are still advancing chemtrail buffoonery. But it's good news that chemtrails don't exist. I'm sorry if you don't want that good news. But, you know, it's it's your life. You want to give yourself chemtrail lung, go for it. And chemtrail lung is a thing, but it's purely psychosomatic. Uh, X Suburks Sub says, Owen isn't stealing the meme. He got it from David Weiss, who got it from Jake. And he didn't say the same thing. Okay, that's a reference to the homeless tweaker shelter on the moon thing. And, yeah, you know, two years after the joke was made by Jake Gibson, popularized, and he's one of the top flat-earth comedians until Owen Benjamin came along. There's only three. There's only a handful of comedians that talk flat-earth. You had Math Power Mud, then you had Jake Gibson, and then two years later, Owen Benjamin. Gibson's main t-shirt was the homeless tweaker shelter on the moon. So he owns that meme and joke. The only reason I commented on it is that I heard Owen Benjamin make the same joke on a live stream, but he prefaced it by saying, I came up with it first. Anybody else is copying me. Well, sorry, there's two years there. This person defending Owen is saying, well, he got it from David Weiss. Well, that's receiving stolen property. It's still a mean crime. It's still theft or misappropriation. So, again, I don't care. It's a terrible joke anyway, no matter how you tell it. There's no way to make that joke funny. I mean, on the bright side, you have a couple of influencers who are at least you know, spreading a little truth that NASA's run by crackheads. We can stand by that. But as far as who started the joke, yeah, I, I don't think anybody cares. I would really like to play a clip of Roseanne Barr talking to David Weiss about more land more continents and so I am going to play the audio on a different browser window where I'm not blocked or whatever the number is now what if seven. there's eight what if there's 80 or 90 thousand continents hmm. across the plain beyond Antarctica there's all now and here's the, here's the thing there's a in the flat earth community there's people like don't talk about more land you know you can prove the earth is flat we can prove the earth is flat right here from everything that we can reach and test and, and measure ourselves what's beyond antarctica is speculation but there's lots of evidence that there's more land beyond the shoreline of antarctica so you're saying that like okay wait a minute so it's like a pie and antarctica is the pie crust well, it's not just a crust. And imagine a lake a hundred miles um, across in the middle of Kansas. Okay, he's trying to explain infinite plane without saying infinite plane because you're not supposed to say that because it might draw attention to the IPS think tank, who have been talking about this while this guy was still promoting a dome, a glass dome, and there's no point in going to Antarctica. Now, strangely, ironically. David Weiss is 100% opposed to anybody going to Antarctica. He thinks it's a bad idea to let someone go down there to do the final experiment to prove the Earth round or flat. He's strangely opposed to that, which is strange because now he's talking about 90,000 continents. Well, I want to go. All those resources, why wouldn't we want to go? But no, he's opposed to it. But he was also heavily opposed to Mad Mike Hughes. Don't know what it is. Um, I mean, it's not like we're competing for app sales. So I'm not really understanding why he's so opposed to anybody getting more information, which is the only thing we should be doing right now. Getting more information. And there's a lot of popular talk about moon landings being faked. You know, people like Candace Owen even talking about it. But I want to point out that the moon landing is another Sandy Hook. The fact that it's fake is immaterial. The concept of fakery is being missed when we only focus on these singular events. We're missing the forest of fakery because we're watching loudmouths run laps around one or two big fake trees. It's a totally controlled, limited hangout. They promote a lot. There's a lot of anonymous channels promoting Sandy Hook truth. It's like, look, you shouldn't trust Sandy Hook truth. It may be the truth, but these are not these individuals promoting this stuff they're anonymous they're unaccountable and they're not connecting it to 50 other fake events 
or the space fakery. And if you're not looking at it in its totality, you might not be going far enough. You're not going to reach the right conclusions. Same thing with the moon landing. There are people who professionally debunk the moon landing, publish big books on it, and yet they still believe in space travel and secret space programs and alien bases and space stations. I'm like, wait, here, you're able to look at the moon landing and describe why it's fake, and then you look at the even faker, ISS, and you're like, wow, that's amazing. Doesn't make sense. It's incongruent. Same thing, Alex Jones deconstructs one shooting event, but then believes the next one. And they all, down the line, fall for the same thing. So there are some people who miss the psy war for the psyop. They miss the forest for the trees. And we don't. That's why Candace Owens and other celebrities, like even Roseanne Barr, yeah, you get these celebrities spouting these things, but they're doing so contained within the control dialectics. It's always right-wing. It's always one degree separated from neo-Nazis, racism, sexism. I mean, Candace Owen is the poster child for internalized misogyny, and she espouses all of the uh, racist ideologies of the right that you can't say um, unless you want to be called racist. But she has protection because, of course, they, they basically instrumentalized her, of her gender and race. And she did it, you know, willingly, complicitly, whatever you want to call that. Rapper admits to shooting Fulio for $10,000. There's this post that came out on Fulio's Instagram that suggested that his death is a hoax, and now you have this individual coming out saying that he did it, which doesn't mean it was done. This could be part of the hoax. I love, bro. On the dead homies, bro, I put it on everything on my soul, on my kids, nigga. I'm the one that smacked Julio Fulio that night when he got dropped at his birthday celebration, bro. You feel me? I ain't gonna show my face and give my identity away or nothing like that, but you know, I... Uh, you just showed your face. This is, obviously, I think it's a hoax, but he's admitting that he shot Fulio for 10K, which isn't a lot of money. did that, you feel me? It was money on his head, you feel me? I rock, I rock with Ace and them boys, you feel me? ATK, you feel me? I be in Jacksonville heavy, you feel me? If you know, you know. But yeah, you feel me, I did that, you feel me, I handled that, cuz, you know, Ace had that money on his head, you know, Ace had them put that 10K up, told me to slide, told me to smack food, cuz you know, he got tired of that nigga running his mouth, playing all the time, you feel me? So, what had to be done, had to be done. Okay, anyway, uh, I guess, my main takeaway here is that, if you're making so much money as a rapper, couldn't you spend uh, 5 or 10K bulletproofing your cars? It's a very common thing. I'm not buying it. I think it's a hoax for a few reasons. We'll continue to examine this one critically. Uh, this is a meme. This is a truth or meme. And I just want to point out, this is part of the cultural pessimism. They don't want you to fly. They want you to feel bad for everything. Everything is toxic. When you're a truther, you exit the dream world. You enter the nightmare. The nightmare is just as fake as the dream world. You're better off dreaming, just peacefully. But look at this. Since I've awakened, all of this looks like poison. So now you're awake, so you go into a grocery store, a convenience store, and everything is toxic, everything is poison, the sky is poison, the water is poison, everything's killing you. This is what they call awake. It means you're paranoid. You've been rendered paranoid. This is clinically diagnosable insanity. I'm scared of everything. Scared of the air. And I got a comment here from someone. Um, now this is another one of these internet preachers. I'm following these QAnon truthers. And there is this one who is talking about how we're just about at the point where the Great Awakening is going to start. And how many years have they been saying there's going to be a Great Awakening? And he said, the heaven is going to open and people will see the light. I'm going to play a clip from this and then a comment that I saw. Uh, it's going to be wild watching what's going on. I think we're very, very close. The word that we got this past few days is that um, coming out of the backside of Treasury, that it is imminent, quote unquote, and that it's very, very close. And they believe that the process has begun. 
song is. It's very close. The process has begun, and the heaven is open, and people are going to see the light. Now the question is just how quick is the rollout? Right. Now, people have talked about the 10 days of darkness. I think when we first started this, we were talking about three days of, of nonstop perp walks or videos. I've three days of perp walks. They believe that all the Democrats are going to be lined up by the military and taken out and shot. So this is the Great Awakening they're talking about, the Great Bloodbath. And they're just saying, well, when is it going to begin? Well, maybe it's about to begin, finally. For me, it's, it's the heaven has opened and the people are going to see the light, and which we've talked about for over 30 years. Now, I remember this individual telling me that on September 23rd, 2017, the tribulation will begin. I'm like, oh, it's the end of the world. He said, no, it's just the beginning of the end, the beginning of seven years. Well, we've gone past the tribulation, and I haven't seen it beginning yet. Uh, but one commenter sarcastically said, the quakening, spelled with a Q, quickens. The Q Oculypse and the Q Rapture are very, very close, if not imminent. Not today, but tomorrow, and it has yet begun. And my response, mostly agreeing with him, the beginning of the beginning is about to begin, which will signal the start of the Great Awakening, which will be the end, which is the beginning. But it's about to begin, so grab your popcorn. And a lot of people agreed with me on that. Like, yep, it's all about to begin. This is hopium. This is what you see in Trutherville. This is what huffing chemtrails does to your brain, does to your cognition. Unbelievable. It's like, you know what, at some point you just have to give up hope that everything's going to end badly. you got to give up hope that there's going to be a global bloodbath and a global snuff film that we all have to watch on TV. Your murder fantasies, your heads rolling down the street fantasies, your locking up Hillary Clinton stuff, you're going to have to let that hatred go. Really, the Q movement is just pure hate, if you think about it. It is hate for celebrities, hate for America. It is, in fact, the domestic equivalent of radical Islam with their values. Magaban values are, in fact, Islamic. Um, it's, it's a templated thing. The radical Islamic, the caricature created by the CIA. We're talking about the deep state being the equivalent of the great Satan. And all of the trad right values correspond perfectly with this this is why they hate celebrities it's why they hate hollywood it's why they hate movies and art it really is a very regressive and cultish movement at this point okay let me go through my notes uh, we talked about roseanne barr candace owen boeing still stuck in space another jfk jr contender so many false Kennedys. Does it say that in the Bible that there's going to be many false Kennedys while we're waiting for the second coming? We have uh, exploding RVs, shark attacks just like Jaws. We have the hot dogs, the scorched dog burning the house down. Roasted barbecue dog. All kinds of dog star scorching dog star symbolism encoded in these stories. I mean, what is that? A dog setting a house on fire. RFK roasting a dog. An exploding RV. I was hoping it had been Russian vids. You know, he's finally going to make a statement. Maybe he's inspired by Maxwell as Rello. But no, RV Truth doesn't actually have an RV. It's just a name. It stands for Russian vids. And I, I thought he changed it to Ukraine vids, but I think he went to something else like they Live Truth, which is a John Carpenter reference. All right, moving on here. Eddie F. says, I doubt Jaronism works for NASA. People always think people are shills. Well, then explain to me this. Explain how he provided multiple ISS transits. Doesn't mean he's an astronaut. I mean, in fact, looking at his mugshot, I assume he made some kind of a deal. And he's heavily associated with people that we already know. And, for example, the whole connection between the guys from Ghostbusters and the Denver police doing intel for the police, which meant handling criminals, uh, sex offenders, and then putting them to work online, promoting conspiracy theories. I mean, look at ODD TV. Very popular Denver-based rapper slash truther who, um, it was later revealed, was a sex offender. And 
it's like he has 270,000 subs, big influencer, very prolific. Then you find out he's got this bad past. But that's all in the past. Is it? And then adjacent to him, you got Robbie Davidson and Rob Skiba producing the same content. And these guys are hanging out with Philip Stallings, who founds the Bible Flatter Society. That guy's serving a, like a life sentence for for child uh, content. I mean, we're talking child porn, horrible stuff. So then we find out they bring in Joshua Swift, authentic content, another sex offender dragged out of some dungeon, put on the streets. My point being, these individuals are all connected to um, law enforcement at some level. They're being handled. These are people working out deals. And it seems to me that there is some overlap here with all of these characters. Why do you think David Weiss was so defensive of Joshua Swift? You know, how do you defend a guy who abused a 14-year-old for six months? I'm sorry to see. I, I, don't, I don't even like talking about this, to be honest. But he defended it, as did all the other people in that clique. They defend each other. So then I see, in the same circles, the same people, Jaron is there producing ISS transits for a, with a guy with David Weiss, who, who, who was a fake 9-11 witness, claimed he saw planes hit in the building. He told me this himself. David Weiss used to call me when this channel started, he used to call me after the live streams and he would say, please don't say nobody died on 9-11. I saw the planes. He even told me, I have a friend and he's lying. He's a liar. David Weiss is a liar. He told me he had a friend who was a paramedic who had PTSD from seeing bodies splattering and that, had to, and that person has to go talk to a therapist every day. He made up a huge whopper in order to gatekeep how I talked about these subjects. So the fact that he claims to see a plane, which was only CGI, in order to reinforce the narrative makes perfect sense. He claims to see the ISS. CGI. They insert the CGI overlay. You know how they put the CGI planes over the demolition? They put the CGI ISS over a lunar observation. They have it pass over the sun. It's an animation. It's video composite layering. They're just layering the video and they're putting the plane layer or the ISS layer one step higher. Same PSYOP. Faking planes, faking space stations. But again, there is no ISS in space. It's a movie. There is nothing up there. The only people saying so are citing individuals like Jaron who aren't providing eyewitness footage. He's not an eyewitness. You only see it through a solar filter, a lunar filter a lunar transit or a solar transit during the day. Well, what do these have in common? No eyewitnesses. You don't see the ISS at night. It's not reflecting the sun, Earth's shadow. You don't see it during the day. It's too bright. So they aim the telescope at the sun, put a filter over it. Oh, there it is passing in front of the sun. That is a magic trick. If the ISS was there, you could go outside right now. If it was real, you could take, and look, it was so precise. He counted down 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then the ISS shows up. If it was that predictable, Jaronism could go outside right now tonight using his app and he could say, yeah, the ISS is going to be right here at this time. Then we do a selfie video and you'll see a light go over my head. Nobody can do that because it's not real. They can't show you true eyewitness footage. So there's no other explanation. He is working. I'm not saying he's with NASA or hired by NASA, but He's working on behalf of somebody. And at some point, yes, there's an overlap here. So Jaron is NASA. There is no other explanation. If you want to call in and try to um, explain to me how it could work, sure. Explain to me. Explain to me. Oswaldo says, Flat Earth Dave doesn't call himself fed for nothing. Buzzing Fret says, if you're dealing with dearth, don't you lose credibility? Not for everybody. But there are a lot of shady characters around Trutherville. Ryler05 says, truth drop alert, more land, there's more land, I have no doubt, we're being confined to this area like a prison. If you remember, from 2017, or probably even earlier, 2015, until like last year, they all said, there's a dome. Science is hiding the dome because it proves God. Don't listen, Russian vid said, more land is a satanic blasphemy. He said, I was promoting Satanism, because I said, it doesn't make sense that they're trying to keep you from the Bible that they're trying to prevent you from joining a church or hiding God. This doesn't make sense. This is their explanation. Mark Sargent uses this. Oh, the scientists just, don't, they don't want you to know that this is a creation. No, what makes more sense is human greed, controlling resources, power.
power, all the usual stuff that explains everything else in the world. So the most reasonable explanation is the globe model would be presented to us in order to restrict our migration to other areas. It could just be as simple as that, which makes all the more sense. So when Bezos and others start mining from space, you know, we should really ask ourselves, did they bring down tons and tons of nickel or platinum from Psyche, some space rock, or did they drag it from another continent? Eddie F says, I'm tired of flat. Shouldn't we be into what NASA really is? NASA is an Egyptian mystery school. NASA is the ritual pageantry for the One World Order's religion. Instead of the normal Catholic Mass with the Pope worshipping the obelisk, you got a burning obelisk. It's all ritual. This is why it's very significant that the astronauts, that Aldrin is up there on the moon doing the Holy Communion. I mean, they had Eucharist and wine, uh, bread and wine on the moon. That tells you everything about this thing. It's 100% a cult. It's not about flying around. Osher says, How things have changed since the last time I heard him. Now he's talking about infinite. Oh, they all are. All of these individuals affiliated with these guys, with this group. Um, and I, I maintain a distance because it's very questionable that you have a Flat Earth conference and 8 out of 10 people are sociopaths with bad criminal records and they're all engaged in pushing a very specific narrative about a Bible and a dome and then all at once they're like, what Bible? What dome? There's more land. Kevin Mooring says, didn't Hitler build a theme park on Antarctica? That's where they park their their rail powered UFOs. 777 says, the whole thing of Jake, Orifice, and Powerland seems very disingenuous. Well, Powerland called me after we put the Research Flat Earth billboard up. He was super mad about it. And I called CBS, and they called me back. And I told him, I said, yeah, CBS is going to call me because they're going to ask about the Research Flat Earth billboard. And he's like, Jake Gibson's on his way. We can't let you do this. You can't have that billboard up because it will have people searching and they'll find the wrong information. And I'm like, too late. The IPS already bought the billboard. Research Flat Earth, big giant billboard outside of an airport. And it's about to be on the news and CBS is calling. And he said, you can't do this. Flat Earth is my creation. He said that. So I'm like, well, Flat Earth is his creation. He says he owns it. So when CBS called me, I'm like, yeah, this was sponsored by, they, they wanted to know who, who was behind it all. I'm like, yeah, just research Math Powerland. And so I put his name attached to the story because he was being such a baby about it on the phone. And I was like, I don't really care. I just want to let the meme out and, you know, just kind of, you know, light the fuse, see what happens. And here he is trying to gatekeep me, trying to stop me, calling from across the country, sending Jake to come inspect me for some reason. And I went ahead and just, we went through with it anyway. So anyway, he, he broke down afterward. He cried. He had a major meltdown. Then he moved to Mexico, where now he sells bags of mud. He sells dirt. He's selling the flat earth. So I guess he really did create it. He owns it, apparently, because he can sell dirt. He's selling flat earth by the ounce. So you can brush your teeth with it, dye your hair with it, and rub it on your face because it reverses age. Apparently, it's better than adrenochrome if you go by power clay. It's probably vegan compared to adrenochrome. Anyway, all these individuals are interesting. Kevin Mooring says, I love how these document deniers quote government docs. Like, oh, yeah, we can't trust the government, but the leaked docs we can trust. That's called reverse psychology. Uh, Witsit gets it falls for this. He's like, well, there's no evidence for chemtrails but government docs. It's like, but patents. You can put anything, you, you can file a lawsuit for anything, you can patent anything, you can create, you can produce documents for anything doesn't make it true it becomes an appeal to authority and Witsit gets its basic argument for chemtrails was but government documents there's lots of government documents government 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 oh really well what about the government documents about water on the moon or water on mars and 
No, you can't trust those government documents. Oh, really? Well, which government documents can we trust? Just the ones that back up your point of view? That's not how it works. Eddie F. says, I used to listen to journalism, but I couldn't listen to Flat Earth Talk anymore. Yeah, there was no reason to. I mean, we were tired of this uh, Flat Earth versus Round Earth Talk when this channel started. Infinite Plane Society was designated so because we wanted to oppose the idea of Flat Earth Society with their model and their conclusion that they're smugly squatting on. It's like you're squatting on your little domed model as though you have all the answers in the universe. And we're like, I don't know. Infinite to prove it otherwise, we have to test it. And no one has done that. And we were instigating this. We had a space program. We had someone ready to go deep, deep, deep south. And they opposed it. Old news, but it's all going to come out at some point in some form. In fact, I'm going to do a expose on all of this for those who miss this bit of history. Ryler says Tupac was a ballerina. Eddie F says Tupac was an attractive woman with a shaved head. Hmm. Now, I don't believe that Tupac is dead. Never believed it. The guy who's allegedly credit the guy who shot him or allegedly shot him is about to be released. He's making bail. And uh, I believe he has Donald Trump's birthday or something, which is weird. Copesthetic says, Eddie F., Jaragism works for NASA. Anybody that does an ISS transit works for NASA. Anybody who, who is advocating for fake space or advocating for any of the fake news at some point is either an agent or a dupe. So which is it? And in this case, why would you present ISS transits and then say, you still think the Earth is flat. That is logically inconsistent because if the Earth is flat, then the ISS cannot possibly be where they say it's going to be because that's all predicated on it orbiting. No object the size and shape of a space station can fly through the atmosphere. No drone, no craft, and no human craft can go 17,000 miles per hour in the atmosphere. It would destroy itself. In the frictionless hypothetical environment of low Earth orbit, sure, it's no problem. So to see the ISS is to therefore confirm the existence of outer space, low Earth orbit, the globe. There is no other way around it. So, the, so then they kind of dance around and say, well, there's something else up there. There's a, a celestial object that's already there. I, I hear all these things from people like, and I hate to mention them, but Dearth has maintained that there is an object up there and that it's a pre-existing object, and that NASA invented the ISS in order to explain away this light that people are seeing. Nobody is seeing a light up there. There is any, there's nothing up there. The argument for the existence of the ISS is fallacious, and I cleaned this up. A lot of people used to call in and they would say, I saw the ISS, and I'll call you back in two hours, and I'll see it again, and they would do it. I had this Canadian caller, I don't remember his name, and he, he kept on calling me, to say that he saw the ISS. He's like, yeah, I saw it again. There it was again. Until I told him, hey, you know that after sunset, there's a small window where you can see it. Other than that, you can't see it because the shadow of the Earth. But he would say he saw light going from horizon to horizon. A lot of people would do that. You know how many people would call with fake ISS sightings? You know how many people would call and say, I know somebody who died on 9-11. What's the name? Don't want to tell you. Give me the initials. It's a secret. Oh, really? So you care so much about your friend that was destroyed in this horrible tragedy, and you're not going to honor their memory by dropping a name? One person gave me some initials. I looked it up. It wasn't on the list. So many liars out there. So many liars. Linda Curtis says, I remember when the Flurfers claimed Hillary and the breaking glass was her admitting to the dome. Yes. I've heard that as well. And there's a lot of reasons why people would believe the dome or think it's plausible. But the problem with dome is dome is like an upside down bowl. It's a curved thing, which implies an edge, which implies it's higher in the middle. And I kind of think it's a pointless conversation anyway. You can speculate endlessly about that, but what about just taking the trip? And here we are eight or nine years after the conversation begins, and finally, finally, 
some flat earthers are going to set to the South Pole. And now they're all against it. People like, even, um, you know, okay, I thought I heard, a, did anybody hear a coffin creak? Like, I heard Eric Dubé, he's like back from the dead. Uh, Eric Dubé came out with a video the other day. And he said, I'll see if I can find it. And he came out saying, there's no way I'm going to find him on a Google search. You know how they... 90 seconds. But he came out saying that this experiment would be used to stab flat earthers in the back and it would give a false positive and that nobody should agree that if they see a 24-7 sun, it's real. In fact, uh, David Weiss had suggested that they could fake a sun in Antarctica with a helicopter like dangle a fake sun from a helicopter and do a big circle around the flat earthers. That's why they're afraid of doing it. 60 seconds. Okay, um, phones are now off, which is fine. We'll continue this conversation um, later on as well. Um, it's still early in the day. We'll stick around for a little bit. Dewis and Paris says, the more land thing is the one thing that normies don't glitch out on. Whoever has the power to map land likely has the power to not map land. Oh, no, we, we know they lie in the news. We know they lie about history, but they would never lie about cartography. Right. The one thing that matters, resources. You know, I, I understand um, people wanted to think that it's objective and that we can trust this stuff. It's all been tested, but no, you can't trust them about worldview in general, whether it's your internal concept or the geography. Why give them the benefit of the doubt? Yeah, let's just trust the liars with the one thing that matters most. What do we know about the uncharted waters? Well, we know that it's all just water. There's nothing there. There's all kinds of emptiness. No, um, maybe there's another continent. Maybe not. Maybe there's a lot more land. But you wouldn't know from what NASA shows us. Even if the Earth is a ball, 25K in circumference, going around the sun, as they say, it doesn't validate NASA's footage. They're bad CGI. It does not. The, the ISS footage of the Earth is fake. Whether or not the Earth is what they say, it, it's, it doesn't matter. It's still fake. So they're hiding the flat, or they're hiding aspects of the ball, if you want to believe that it is a ball. But you still can't say that NASA is providing us accurate footage and scientific evidence of the ball in space. But the other issue was, the Bible flat earth thing kept it in science is bad, read a Bible. That's not an easy sell. It's very divisive. And I wouldn't even go with it. Like, I really don't think so. I'm not going to go into uh, another alternate, more archaic form of mind control. I think we need to move past worldview filters. And what I argued with the documentary crew out of Scandinavia is that the subject has been too often boxed into anti-science, religious paradigms, when in fact it should be about worldview and how we come to know what we claim to believe or how we claim to assert um, anything about the world and you know what informs us and what role media has in this and the blind spot. And I'm drawing attention to the blind spot, the dupability, and, and the dupability of the... Uh, the individual and the collective is very well demonstrated. Anybody who thinks they're not dupable is lying to themselves. Eddie F says, I'm tired of transvestigation. Yeah, transvestigation is a bad joke. Um, I, I think it was a psyop. I doxed one of the main transvestigators. I never took it seriously because too many of them would, would they would miss sex me. And I'm like, well, you're not being objective if you're just name-calling people who don't agree with you. And I spent a little bit of time with skeletons when I was at the Pierce Mortuary College at Fort Lee, Virginia, learning the 92 Mike MOS uh, Mortuary Affairs. And we were taught about human anatomy and how to identify skeletons. And they had broad categories of, quote, races. But they specified that you have different skulls and that you have to consider which category of skulls before you try to ascertain sex. Which means that the transvestigationists who are constantly missexing people 
are wrong because they're only using one skull. They're only using the Caucasoid skull template. Doesn't make any sense. But I did dox one of the main persons behind this, and it turns out she's a communist, a uh, supporter of Bernie Sanders, who is a communications teacher at a community college. And I, I found her, I found her pictures, I looked into her, and it looks to me like this is some kind of hardcore liberal harpy pretending to be a far-right Christian transvestigationist attacking anybody in Hollywood and um, making people look crazy by association. So I think it's a huge psyop and there's no evidence for it. Nobody has proven anything. The only thing they prove is that they're, they've are they never seen a, a naked woman before. I mean, really, it's pretty sad. I, I don't know how many people still push it. Most of those who do are anons. They're anonymous. Clickbait. It's just, it's just engagement bait. And they're also evidence averse. I mean, I actually did try to get to the bottom of it. And I'm like, okay, so what is your, what will change your mind? Uh, what would prove you wrong? Because if nothing can prove your theory wrong, if facts can't prove your theory wrong, because science isn't about reinforcing a bias and cherry picking, it's about proving your theories wrong and maintaining the best explanation, but being open for better explanations. So in this case, I'm like, well, if something proves them wrong, they have to reevaluate everything. So they're like, yeah, Hunter Biden is a woman because everybody on TV is the opposite. Sylvester Stallone, biological woman, because everybody in Hollywood, no exceptions. So then I'm like, well, what do you, what do you say about someone like Hunter Biden or Stormy Daniels? I'm like, yeah, Stormy Daniels is a biological male. I'm like, okay, well, Stormy Daniels. Sylvester Stallone and Hunter Biden all have copious amounts of video and photography that you can find online that will prove you wrong. And and they'll say, well, no, that's CGI. Oh, really? Oh, it's prosthetic? Sylvester Stallone, like 50 years ago, was involved in prosthetic body parts to fake something on this scale? But even if you go with that, and a lot of them will, they'll say, yes, Hunter Biden and all these 4,000 pictures of him nude are all CGI. If you go with that, you're still stuck with the fact that he has a, a, a male skeleton. Anyway, uh, yeah, Transvestigation jumped the shark a long time ago, and none of them are serious. None of them are serious enough to come out in person and show their faces. That, that's why Mr. E is anonymous. It's a form of gaslighting, by the way. It's a form of gaslighting, and it does work. It, it might be an active measure to cognitively impair and damage truthers, not just their reputation by making them sound crazy, but it might actually be a, a, a mind war attack. The definition of gaslighting is when you tell someone that what they perceive is wrong, and when you get them to believe it, they're gaslit. So, for example, the people who share this theory do believe it because they have been told that all their life, the entire life, all of their perceptions about other people have been wrong. All of them. And once they accept that premise, now they are gaslit. So it's, it's gaslighting. It's terrible. Okay, let's move on here. T. Latte said, what happened with the Goldfinch case? I know that he needed to respond a few days ago. Yeah, this should be interesting. His 30 days is up, and I have not received any notification from the court yet, but it's passed. So I'm waiting to find out, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, submit for a default judgment. I'm not sure how it works. You have two defendants. One of them is a no-show, but has been served. Do I get a default, or do they? How, how is this going to work? I'm not sure. We shall see. We'll see what the court's going to do, because we're also dealing with criminal matters as well. And in my opposition to their motion to dismiss, I specified that the person who received emails on behalf of Goldfinch, the person at YouTube Legal, needs to be added as a John Doe defendant. And when I mentioned this to Google's attorney, he sounded flustered. He said, I haven't talked about this with my clients, because I hadn't mentioned before that I had it in mind to drag this person out and hold them responsible for what is, in fact, criminal conspiracy. But, yeah, I expect updates any day now. 
my motion was accepted. It's in the judge's hands, and I'm hope, hoping it makes Google mad. It should. Because they keep trying to deflect. Like, oh no, this is between you and Marcus Goldfinch. This is not us. He committed the crimes. Oh, you agree with me there were crimes committed. Excellent. Because if nobody's disputing the central facts, then maybe we can just have a summary judgment right now. But whether or not he acted with malice and intent to commit fraud is immaterial to the negligence demonstrated time and again by Google YouTube. Every time they rejected my counter notifications to his false strikes, they acted on his behalf. So we'll see. The next meeting is July 22nd. In fact, it's this month. So in a few weeks, we have a pretrial meeting. That's 722. Unless they decide they don't want it to go to trial. I hope it goes to trial. You know, I'm not in this for the money. I'm in this to punch Big Brother in the face for colluding with these bad actors to try to suppress the IPS think tank. This is our retribution. And it has to be embarrassing for them. That's more important than anything. So the idea of Goldfinch settling, we passed that a long time ago. And it wouldn't even matter now. He could settle with me on the civil stuff and on the cyber squatting stuff, which I wouldn't do. But even if I did, it wouldn't change the fact that there is a criminal element. There are criminal complaints that need to be addressed. And it gets even better. Because I have realized, I've learned and revealed, and this is going to be this is in my documentary I'm working on, that he's BFFs with and a, and a, in conspiracy with Garrett Ziegler, that the guy I'm suing is the one who hacked Hunter Biden's laptop. Wait until the leftist media gets a hold of that; they will eat him alive. Okay, I'm going through your comments. Eddie F. says, Mr. E is big on trans investigation. He's on fakeologist. Yeah, he, he's a, a dome earther, which is a very questionable position. He's always been anonymous, very questionable. If you have the truth that would unmask the biggest conspiracy running the world, why would you hide in your basement? And I've, I've watched some of his videos. I don't find it compelling. You're analyzing photoshopped images anyway. Impossible ideals. And if you've ever met or looked at models in real life when they're not on camera, there's a lot of Photoshop that goes into all of this stuff. So I just think it's a flawed methodology. It's fake forensic anthropology. They These people are crazy. You could convince transvestigationists that all dogs are cats. They would believe it too. But what's the intention here? Well, uh, active measure. Again, cognitive sabotage, just like the Mandela effect. Roseanne Barr says Trump is the first woman president. Yeah, she did say that. That was pretty funny. She said, hear me now. Trump is the first woman president. Didn't Biden just say that he's the first black woman president? This came out today. Yeah, here it is. Joe Biden says he's the first black woman to serve in the White House. I am proud to be the first black woman in the White House. Unbelievable. The malfunctions on this particular bot. Proud to be, as I said, the first vice president, first black woman mm -hmm. to serve with a black president. Anyway, he's a black woman, sort of the black president? Yeah, okay. So, so this is like such good glitching. It's hard to believe this isn't real. Like, would an actor be able to fake it this good? I think it's a valid question. Okay, anything else going on? Diana South says, the media runs both sides. It's a toss-up whether they pick up the story. Yeah, it's important to keep in mind here that both sides are complicit in the big deceptions. There's a lot of fighting you know, there are skirmishes on the bottom level of this thing and true believers who do hate each other and believe all this stuff, but it's not an oversimplification to say that it is 100% controlled from the same monolithic entity. Okay. 
All right, let's see what else we have here. We talked about the burning dogs. Fascinating. U.S. flag code. The flag should never be used as apparel, bedding, or drapery. This is a reporter letting a MAGA know you shouldn't be wearing the flag. A lot of these MAGAs, again, like this is how this thing works. You have the, the PSYOP, you have their, their actors, the Q Shaman, all the fakes. But life imitates PSYOPs and people really do follow what they see on TV. Somebody disrespecting the flag, what thoughts go through your brain? Get the hell out of here then. You don't, want, you don't like this country? Leave. Go. Get, go somewhere else. There is nowhere else to go that's going to be better than America. All right, go. Get the hell out of here then. Anyway, I'm, I got MAGA fatigue. I have, I have a lot of fatigue these days, chemtrail fatigue. And yeah, this thing T. Latte says, Biden was just rambling, got messed up. Yeah, that's the thing too. I'm, this constant calling out of gaffes. This is just low-level political warfare. Like people slowing down video of Nancy Pelosi speaking and saying, oh, look, she's drunk again. Like who finds this entertaining? I, I have the perspective here of, a, of an alien anthropologist just examining this from afar, objectively, ivory tower, off-world stage, not getting in the mud with them whatsoever. And I, you know, I mentioned the truther memes where it's like, now that I'm awake, I walk into a convenience store and I'm afraid of everything. Here's another example of a truther operative. This is Mindy Robinson, who promotes the controlled opposition version of Vegas, false flagger, uh, obviously a Fed. She says, you know what? I believe in prayer and juju and good vibes. I could use your prayers to heal right now as I deal with calcified deposits over my body due to the toxic, contaminated urine of a bajillion prescription and recreational drugs and birth control in the groundwater. All of this construction runoff, filled with dead bodies and biological and chemical waste. We need to dump these corrupt politicians because they have turned Lake Mead into... So this is Mindy Robinson talking about how she's toxic now. Oh, come on. This is two in one day. I'm trying to read the tweet, and I am blocked by I Heart Mindy. Uh, this is how you know. Look, this is a good litmus test. If they block me, they're controlled opposition. <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. They don't want my ideas getting to their subscribers. That's what we're seeing here. They're constantly trying to box us out. Kevin Mooring says, left calling now for Joe to go as they have stole the MAGA hate for Joe. They steal everything. If we base this off of the Metascript perspective and the predictive programming, all signs point to Kamala. That's just where it points. I would also draw your attention to Super Bowl 47, very prophetic. The so-called Blackout Bowl, 33 minutes of darkness after Beyonce performs. So you have Beyonce possibly a foreshadowing of um, black female leadership. The blackout 33 minutes had the Colin Kaepernick as a quarterback who's a hugely uh, important figure in the BLM and the leftist critical race theory critique of the West itself. The blackout also very significant. Super Bowl 47 would correlate with right now election to see who's going to be president number 47. Kevin Mooring says, release the Kraken, a.k.a. Kamala. Yeah, but I, I'm basing everything off of my presupposition here that we're looking at pre-scripted news. And they do telegraph through foreshadowing what's coming next. They get us to accept it as inevitable. And we've been treated to years and years of incompetent leadership from, uh, from males, from old white men. And I think what they're doing is they're creating a sharp contrast. And you might find it. You might find Kamala Harris to be unserious and unbelievable. Like her her speeches are all written by Chat GPT, out of touch with reality. And you may be right on all of it, but it doesn't matter. You know, you you have to remember that we're looking at this through enlightened lenses, knowing a bit more about how things work. Whereas the people on the world stage are low information, 
low information believers, low information non-believers. There's some beef here. Um, well, maybe. Fight the Flat Earth is highlighting it. Fight the Flat Earth says to David Weiss, do you want to explain why you're throwing your buddy Jaronism under the bus? You lied about him. That's funny. I was just calling him out as a liar. What is he referring to? Well, not quite sure, but I think it has to do with Antarctica. Let's see what the responses are. Okay, we're going. Th I'm going through the comments on Fight the Flat Earth. I guess the major disagreement here is that uh, Dearth does not want anybody going to Antarctica, and Jaren's willing to go, and Dearth is afraid it's going to provide some kind of a false positive. Okay, oh yeah, I want to point out really quickly here, I had a note here, that there's going to be a tendency over the next few months to constantly share and post anti-Biden and anti-Kamala stuff. And this is endemic to Trutherville because their default position is vote Republican, vote GOP. And if you're thinking voting, then you're in their box. At this point, uh, voting should be recognized for what it is if you're aware of, of how fake everything is. There is no lesser of two evils here. It's all just a game. It's an alt-reality game. So my point here is that I'm not taking a pro-Trump position, but I'm also not going to share anti-Kamala stuff either. I'm anti-anti-anti-pro. I think it's important that we don't carry water for the fake news media by helping out the alt-right meme complex. With all of these contrived character assassinations, so for example, Kamala Harris is being brought up as, oh, she slept her way to the top. She did all these things in order to get where she is. And I'm like, what do her past indiscretions matter if the people sharing these memes also claim that Democrats are satanic child abusers who eat adrenochrome out of the child's brains during satanic sacrifices? Like eight years ago, they're like, yeah, the Democrats are vampires and they're going to eat your babies and they're trafficking children under the ground and they rape them and they eat them. And now you're like, yeah, she slept her way to the top. Sorry, like this is like, uh, the, the magnitude of difference between these claims is such a contrast that I'm, I'm finding it hard to believe these are the same people. You're just trying to tell me with equal credibility, these guys are demons and vampires, and she slept around a bit. This is blue pill crap, and it has no value except as ammunition in the blue pill info war within the contained political horseshoe. So it's like, oh wow, she slept with a married man. Meanwhile, every around, everybody around her is accused of, what, dark rituals at pizzerias? Uh, Matt Pizzagates, speaking of pizzerias, Matt Pizzagates, who orders his 17-year-olds on Venmo and didn't know that Venmo publishes your purchases, he trafficked them across state lines. What is it with the right and giving human trafficking a pass when it comes to their own. You know, Andrew Tate, Matt Gates. Anyway, here's Matt Pizzagates holding a Trump 2024 Never Surrender handgun. And there's Trump on the gun. Uh, Garrow called the other day, and I was pointing out the Trump 45 shot glass. Like, okay, Trump is a teetotaler. He, he never drinks, never smokes, never drank at all. And yet, you can get Trump's signature on a, quote, shot glass with a 45 in the side of it? Like, whose idea was this? Then you connect this with a 45 on his hat, on the side of his head, and you can kind of see the meta-scripted messaging here and how consistent this all is. Jack Pizzagate, and Jack Postebeck, who kicked off Pizzagate, um, said, here's something that he posted, which is one of these things that never happened. So here's something that never happened. I see a lot of these fake anecdotes. It's like, I overheard somebody at Walmart, and they were talking about how they used to vote Democrat, but now they're voting for Trump because... It's like, you didn't hear that. Jack says, I had a conversation with a friend who has a total blue Anon baby boomer MSNBC dad who hates Trump. He watched the debate and thought Trump would collapse. But he saw the opposite. He said he's so upset... He couldn't watch the post-debate. 
Now this is the part I'm highlighting. He thinks Russia is going to invade us now. He has Cold War mental conditioning from the Cuban Missile Crisis. He can't get past his TDS. He says, this is too serious. We have to get rid of Biden. The point I was highlighting here is this guy has Cold War mental conditioning. Duck and cover. Afraid of total annihilation instantaneously. Like this is just an example of just how programmed people are. And we just take it for granted that people are scared. And nobody's converting. That's just a phony anecdote. Uh, here's some notes here. RV explosion in Massachusetts. And the victim is on the ground, dropping and rolling on the ground. A burning man. This is uh, Synchro Morpheus posted this, connecting this to Maxwell Azrello. So the RV explosion caught on video. And the crisis actor describing it is wearing a napalm death shirt. And by the way, Napalm Death British Grindcore Pioneers are kicking off an extensive summer tour. Just kicked off. In fact, 7-7 is their next date in the Netherlands. So if you listen to Napalm Death. So I thought, what is this? Napalm Death? Burning RV? Exploding RV? There might be some deeper intrigue here. So we're digging. And... I, I have a lot of notes on this person, and that's just because that's where things are right now. I got this tweet where someone had commented in the Candace Owens Flat Earth Twitter feed that she needs to talk to David Weiss. And someone had shared this link. They said, well, David Weiss hypnotizes or hypnotized a 106-year-old woman into believing that she was taught Flat Earth in school. So Sir Perzel says, oh, you're still exploiting that old demented lady for your narrative, huh? Which is, and I, I'm seeing this here. He posted a video and he shared it to Candace Owens. Ruth was taught flat earth in public schools in Connecticut. So when she was a little child, she was supposedly taught about flat earth in Connecticut schools. So I watched this video and what it looked like to me is how they manipulate Biden. They just put words in her mouth. Uh, he's, he's essentially manipulating her, getting her to, I think it's even jump cut. Let me just play a clip here. Now, this is what I would call interrogator bias. And he's a believer, which makes him a tainted witness. He shouldn't even be doing the interrogation. So you couldn't consider this to be even a legit, legitimate attempt at doing a survey to find out what people learned when they were children. No, this is a manipulation. I was young. Right, and we all we all were told by people that we trust. That's right. Where did you go to school, Ele elementary school? I went to Spurgland School in Hamden, Connecticut. I lived on a farm and grew up with all kinds of animals. No electricity. A big one. Now, if this was true, you would be able to go back and find out from the school what textbooks they were looking to at the time. So she's talking about her farm life. And now here's where he plants the seed in her head and gets her to admit she's a flat earther. Yeah, I can't explain it. So getting back to the flat earth, um, you said that you're religious, that, that yes. you... That you uh, you follow the Bible. Yes, I do. And and are you aware that the Bible... Is now, he's not a Bible believer. He'll even say, I don't believe in the Bible, but if you do, here's 200 Bible proofs. But here he is telling her, oh, you believe in the Bible. Well, did you know this about your Bible? It is all about the flat earth, that God put the foot, you know, the, the earth on the footstool and separated the waters from the waters. And... Okay created the firmament if you if you read genesis i'm not the bible guy i have friends that are see i'm not the bible guy but i got friends who are so he's not even a bible guy he's not a believer but he's telling her what she should believe and she does not seem to be grasping the subtleties behind what the snake is whispering into her ear so good at it but there's over 200 verses in the bible that refer to a flat earth that's right and there's only, I think there's only one verse that mentions 
Earth is a circle, but just like this cable right here, that cable is a circle, right. but it's flat. That's right. Right. A, a circle is different than a sphere. A sphere is the same in every direction. Again, does anybody here think that she is testifying that she was taught that the Earth is flat when she was a child? And he gets her nodding her head, and then he says, how does it feel to know that you were taught flat Earth as a kid? And she's like, it feels great. In every direction, a right. the circle of the Earth. So, right. so how does it make you feel to realize that you were right as a kid? Uh it makes me feel better. It, it does make you feel better, right? Oh, it makes me feel alive. My whole, oh my God, that is so true. My whole life, I believe, yes. you know, what I was taught. That's and then right. when I discovered the flat earth. I feel better you, about it. Because we are the center of creation. That's right. We are well, he no longer espouses this because if there's more land, then how do we know we're the center? What about the 90,000 continents that he was telling the other uh, elderly woman he was manipulating. This is, this is low. It's children. Excellent. Yes. I uh, will, um... I believe in God. I trust God. And when all the problems that are happening in this world... And the music in the background is just too much for me. It goes on and on, but he basically says the globe deception is bad. You were taught this as a kid. And she's like, never at any point. In fact, she... she this is pretty bad here. Watch where he gets her to cry. It's like knowing, going to a magic I, show. I woke up. Yes, that's what we call it. We call it red. This is this is your moment of waking up. Ooh. It's when you go to a, see a magician and you know how the tricks are done and the magic no longer works on you and you're free from the illusion. So knowing this is gonna it free your heart. Cry. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> all right, yeah. Uh, Ollie Goering says it's like Jill Biden coaching Joe. Yeah, it's disingenuous, it's manipulative, it's pretty sad and pathetic what he's doing here. It's not fair, not cool. And um, he even goes here to say that the world is small, that God's on the roof, and that there is no infinite space, that the world is small. Which, again, he does not promote this. And God created yes, this world. Yes, yes. And, and he's right here in the clouds above, close, not in an infinite universe. Uh. So good, right? And I can't get over it. Made me cry. <laughs> Made All right. Anyway, a lot of people, and I'm sure these comments are curated, a lot of people are moved by this, which is strange to me. I don't see anybody here whatsoever calling it out as manipulative. Like, where are these textbooks? Now they call her Flat Earth Ruth. Does she know she's a flat earther? And these comments are sick. I love it when she says it makes me feel alive, beautiful. Um, yeah, this is terrible. I, 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 one of the reasons I quit DirecTV is I was tired of dealing with retirees who had been ripped off by the company. I'm like, how can you rip someone off and sell them on garbage entertainment on free trials that will expire and take their fixed income before they know what hit them? Like they were, they were being screwed left and right, and I couldn't do that. So anyway, she says... So you're still exploiting that old demented woman for your narrative, huh? This is from Surf Punzel. And I responded to her with a link to this. This is not just old ladies. Look what he said when a 14-year-old was abused by his friend. And here's what he said. So I hit him up about this. He said, the whole thing about Josh is pointless. The girl lied. She said she was 18. As soon as she found out, he was devastated. Case closed. Uh, that's not what happened. We were talking about a six-month relationship, picking her up at school, sending her flowers. The mom found out. And so, no, um, there, was, there was no doubt. There's no way that he would have been confused about her age. He had to pick her up from middle school. So, no. And the fact that he defended Weiss is the reason why he was in our documentary behind the perv. At that point, it was like you're either um, behind the perv or not. You know, make your stat. You know, let us know. <laughs> you know, like we asked everybody, what what side are you on? And a lot of people weirdly sided with the abuser. But anyway, um, I posted it here, and I said, not just old 
ladies, look what he said about this. And she said, holy S, that's disgusting. And it's even worse, and I'm going to publish an article about it very, very soon in print because this information is relevant. It needs to get out. She had a few more comments for him. She said, is that poor old lady in the senior home your best flat earth proof? And why are you scared to go to Antarctica? You got invited. And it, you choose to hide behind a video with an old lady. So he's being called out for his refusal to endorse any trip to Antarctica. Which again, I don't understand why somebody would be against that. Ted Stryker 2112 says, is this the same guy who had a show with another guy? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he, he's had a few. He's been on with Jaron. In fact, so this is why I'm saying that it makes sense that Jaron works for NASA, that he's connected to some intelligence agents, operatives, feds, that he's an informant, and he's being handled. And I would I would actually posit here that, that Weiss is a handler. There's no other reason why you would have a social circle comprised of 80% sex offenders. That doesn't make any sense. And and if, if you didn't know, you didn't know. But you're going to tell me that the Bible flat earth, flat earth conferences, that these individuals who are preaching this new faith have zero discernment? Like, I didn't know the guy I was making documentaries with was also doing snuff films on the side. Like, if you didn't know, that's on you. It means you had no discernment, or you were a part of it. Okay, we've covered most of the notes. Lots of interesting new developments. Candace Owen is oh, the big story right now. But also the fact that the astronauts, specifically Buzz Aldrin, did a Catholic Mass and had the bread and wine on the moon, which contradicts Candace Owen's claims about it being a satanic organization. I alluded to this earlier, and this was found by Synchro Morpheus. The individual who filmed the Rodney King beating, Holiday, on the same footage that he was using to film Terminator 2, he has a striking resemblance to James Cameron. That's really weird. I mean, I, I don't know what to make of it, but I do believe that James Cameron filmed the Rodney King PSYOP. And there's a movie coming out called LA-92 about that, which is going to be out very soon. Synchro Morpheus said, George Holliday, who filmed the Rodney King beating, died of COVID. Okay. At 61, he died on September 19th. So COVID-19, September 19th, age 61. The Rodney King beating was 1 minute 19 seconds. They do look close. They look related. Laura Loomer put out a poll. Do you believe Robert Kennedy when he says the animal he ate was a goat, or do you think it was a dog? 51% said it was a goat. They believe him. 49% said he lied. It's a dog. And that's how reality works. It's the desert of the designated real. We can vote. It's choose your own apocalypse. And if it had gone the other way, it would be dog. But right now, presently, it was a goat. Candace Owen says, I'm not a flat earther. I'm not a round earther. What I am is somebody who has left the cult of science. Where did she get this from? Where did Candace Owens come up with shape agnosticism and sex magic rights at the heart of NASA? Where are these people getting their wild ideas from? And they're taking them out of context. I mean, I'm glad the information is out there in a way because we can bounce off it, but it looks to me like it's all contrived. Anx G said, didn't Dirth try to handle you by telling you what not to speak on? Yeah, absolutely. He told me, don't say nobody died, nobody cried. Don't say Alex Jones is Bill Hicks. There's a laundry list of things that he would try to correct me on. And he would specifically call after live streams kind of shady now that I think about it. And I went along with it for months and just by observing I realized okay there's something else going on here we mind mapped it out before we did behind the perv and we found out that yeah at the very core of the popular flat earth movement that became a documentary you do have interaction between law enforcement like why do you have a bunch of cops 
and people working with cops, part of this conspiracy club who believe that the world is a conspiracy. Like, you think they wouldn't trust authority so much. And they don't come out and admit it. And then you have these strange characters like organizer of the conference, he's preaching from the Bible, talking about the dome, but then he comes back in a different costume with false teeth, and he pretends to be a redneck rocket scientist. And nobody acts like he's the same person. They play along with it. So they have this fake character they bring out, who I believe is there to drown out Mad Mike Hughes. And when I call it out, they say I'm a liar. I'm like, there's no way that this is the same person. Then the truth gets out. And they were pretty mad about it. And I got the truth on that, and I'll put this out in this article, this expose. But the way we found out who this person was, was pretty simple. Somebody who was in the know told her boyfriend. They broke up. He wanted revenge. He called me and he told me. He said, hey, guess what? All of the conference organizers are a part of a little deception here, which is very hypocritical. So I took that information and ran with it. And they all denied it. All these Christian Bible flat earthers were lying about it. And one more point. At the final Flat Earth Conference, they invited Jimmy Kimmel's crew to sabotage it. And one of Jimmy Kimmel's guys, Jake Bird, uh, groped a conference attendee, sexual harassment. And she was trying to call the cops. And Robbie Davidson, whose friend is in jail for 56 counts of child abuse material, uh, Robbie Davidson tried to stop her from calling the cops, which is illegal. And the cop who was there, the security, John the cop, he said, and his description of it, and I have the audio from this, he said that when he called out Robbie Davidson on the illegality of preventing from somebody from filing a police report, he said that Robbie Davidson started making these clicking noises in his throat and that he ran out the door and didn't stop running until he was a couple miles away from the hotel and then he called the cops and said he feared for his life. So it's like he literally jumped off the edge of the earth and nobody has seen him since. And I met him at a 2018 conference and I couldn't stop staring at the meth pipe burn on his lip. We had this meme going around that the Flat Earth Conference is really where they're sharing dome glass. They're monopolizing it. They have a dome glass monopoly. They're chopping it up in the back. T. Latte says, Candace got shape agnostic from the IPS. You know, um, her takes are, they remind me of someone who read the stuff, the sensationalized clickbait version of it, and they just throw it out there, but they don't dig any deeper. Kind of like an Alex Stein. Very shallow take. They throw around terms, they don't know what they mean. And again, I've just brought up this thing with Buzz Aldrin doing a Catholic Mass on the Moon to show you that NASA and Catholicism are part of the same. It's part of a continuum, a different iteration of the same thing. Crowley's religion, NASA's religion, Nasatology, Scientology, it's all the same. T. Latte says, so Candace is watching. Hey, Candace, drop out of the clouds and say hi. I don't know how it works with these various operatives. I have a feeling they're all given like a file, like a manila folder. Like these are the memes to push today. And then you hear these memes echoed across, like on the right last year, it was like, get out. Everyone was saying, it's like they get a folder. And all the operatives are like, they post videos of subway violence and say, get out of the cities, get out. And they all do it. Post videos and say, this person suddenly died. It's lockstep. It's the current thing-ism. So they're all given files. So all of a sudden, everybody's talking about Flat Earth. Everyone's talking about Antarctica. It's like, it's suddenly cool. I'm like, well, look, the fact that it took her this long to even bring up the subject indicates that there's zero discernment there at all. She's very insulated. And two, that she's researching it for one night and is ready to go talk about it. It's like, wouldn't you want to do a little more research? It's very shallow. It reminds me like when these basketball players or sports celebrities say the F-bomb, they drop the flat earth, and it never goes anywhere. It seems like a diffusion. But they do have content farmers out there, I'm sure. Here's a meme. It says, Doctor, I'm depressed about the predicted weather in 2050. This is some climate angst. And the doctor says, 
Have you tried annoying others by defacing art or blocking traffic? And it's really fun to mock the climate change people and their ridiculous paranoia, but we have to equally mock the chemtrail enthusiasts and the cloud shouters because it's the same psyop. Just have to be fair. Anyway, thank you for joining. We'll continue this conversation endlessly. It's going to go on for probably decades as we monitor the daily bread and circuses, looking for the latest plot twist, calling it in advance, not because we're prophets, but because we're good at what we do. And we do have certain insights that the rest of the media is not privy to. And so you're getting spoiler alerts for what's going to happen in the quote real world just by watching, listening, and you're also getting a full mind war inoculation. Free. Memes are free too. If you sign up for the newsletter, go to ips.monster and get the newsletter. And there you'll find a link for the new track, Auto Hooksology by Symbia. Excellent track. Um, definitely a great follow up to COVID cooties. One of the greatest things to come out of 2020. Anyway, this is Chief Crow, Auto Hoax or GTFO. Thanks for joining. I'll put a link in the chat.